This weekly compilation will be all about scary cryptid sightings. We'll visit national parks, deep woods and rural towns. And we'll try to answer a basic question. Are cryptids real? And if they are, when will we catch one and thus prove their existence? So far, we base our knowledge on individual accounts. So join us for a few hours to discover real and scary cryptid sightings. Also, do hit that like button, subscribe and hit notification bell. Thank you. And now, story time. Halloween 2022, 4 a.m., my buddy Brian and I were walking to my house from his. The town has three main roads, front, middle, and back. We were moving from front to middle. We round the corner and he's looking at his phone and I stop him because down the street, under a lamp was something big slash tall. It was squatting, arms resting on knees, it was fuzzy, and the fur slash hair was black. It looked six foot tall in its current position. Despite being under a street lamp, I couldn't make out very many details. It had pale hands, they were almost glowing. Couldn't make out a face, though I sometimes remember it being pale like its hands. Its eyes were sparkling. Not like when shine a light on a cat slash dog, but more when you catch a lamp reflection off a window. My friend and I have cell phones, he even used his zoom to get a better look at it, but at no point did we try to get a picture. I just kept thinking to myself my phone sucks, it's gonna be blurry, what if the flash pisses it off? We decided to just switch roads and continued to the back road. I could feel it watching us until we were out of sight. We never seen it again. Brian didn't see any footprints when he went back a couple hours later, and the next day it was raining, but there was a weird smell in the air. I wanted to explain it as a bear, but it was squatting like a human and didn't make any noise. Could have been a drunk, but not many people that tall in our town, with puffy slash fur jackets to boot. My dad jokingly suggested aliens. When I was in high school about 10 years ago I witnessed a pair of slightly glowing yellow eyes looking into my house from the back door. The creature probably stood 7 to 8 feet tall and the only thing that I could see in the darkness were its glowing yellow eyes. I liked in a suburban neighborhood in East Texas. There was a room full of family in the dimly lit living room which was connected to this back door. They were eyes for sure not lights or headlights or anything reflecting off of the glass. I looked into this creature's glass like glowing yellow eyes and felt it was intelligent despite only being able to see its eyes and nothing else. It didn't necessarily scare me per se, I didn't tell anyone at all actually. I just turned around and smoked on my front porch instead of out back. Does anyone know what creature I might have saw that day? Do you guys think it may have influenced my actions by keeping me calm and not alerting my family members that were just a couple steps away? I think about it every time I see any form of glowing eyes. Which is pretty often. I lived in Southern Oregon at the time, on a 30 acre ranch. Our property backed up to a river and across from the river, the woods. I came home from work one night to an empty house and as I'm walking to the back door from my truck I hear rustling in the bushes. We normally get a lot of deer traffic through the property so naturally I just yell hey. It wasn't a deer. Nothing ran away. Instead I hear whatever it was come through the bushes, take two huge steps toward me, and take breaths exhaling loudly and deeply unlike anything I've ever encountered living out here. I froze up for a second and the hair on the back of my neck stood up as I realized this thing was a lot bigger than I was. I ran inside. Turned the spotlights on but didn't see anything. I've told people this story and they always say oh it was a bear or an elk. I'm familiar with bear and elk sounds and the only bear we have out here are skittish black bear. What do you guys think it could have been? 
The two steps toward me sounded like a man stomping as hard as he can and the breathing was deep and gruff. Almost like a bull. This is a story from a few years ago that is still clear as day. I was sitting outside my best friend's house with her and her younger sister. We were swinging on the porch swing and simply enjoying the day. My friend left to go inside to get a drink or something for a quick minute. Her sister and I were together outside just talking. Not even seconds after my friend went inside, we see her poke her head out behind the side of the house. I remember this being, looking exactly like my friend, giggling and then disappearing behind the wall. Her younger sister and I both saw it together. As quick as we'd seen it was as quick as it left. My friend came outside again and we were like bruh what were you doing outside just now and she had no idea what we were talking about. True story. The house she lived in at the time felt spirited and there were other encounters of a similar young girl in the house. Tell me if you've experienced something like this. My encounter with a humanoid. The encounter took place about four years ago. Since learning about humanoids and in particular about the rake, I was always very fascinated about them. Back in the good old days, one of my best friends, Robert, would come over for sleepovers. I introduced him to the rake. We always watched horror movies or videos of bizarre encounters as we loved to frighten ourselves before venturing out into the local woods. I basically live a two minute walk away from the woods. Till that night trip, we never encountered anything really creepy when venturing into the woods. Sometimes Robert would try to stand still in silence in hope of hearing something exciting, F.E. an animal walking over with sticks creating sounds. In order for you to better understand my thoughts later on, I want to give you a detailed explanation of our path. It was after midnight when we headed out. Shortly after entering the forest, there is a small crossing with a left path and a right path. We took the right path, walking up a hill for about a quarter of an hour. After that we just pretty much followed the path reaching the peak of the hill and then ventured down again for about 10 minutes. We reached another crossing. The left path would lead us to another exit whereas the straight path would let us continue walking on to another hill. About half an hour going up the hill, I told Robert that I wanted to go home as I started to get cold and exhausted. Furthermore, I told him that I did not see us witnessing anything exciting anymore for that night. Robert was disappointed, but nevertheless agreed. Robert wanted us to regularly stop speaking and be completely silent so we could hear everything surrounding us. We also flashed our lights in the woods regularly. This is where it starts to get creepy. As we started to head down the second hill, we started to relax and talk about other interests. As my, back then, shrimp posture obliged me to, I more or less only looked at my feet when walking. As we reached the second crosswalk again, Robert suddenly scurried up. In panic, he asked me whether I also saw something jump slash hush in the woods coming from the right path, former left path, to the path we originally came from. As I already mentioned, I looked at my feet when walking down the path, meaning I could not have seen anything. However, I believe that Robert just wanted to build up suspension, as he liked to do that when nothing happened at our trips. So I did not really believe him in that. He started throwing rocks in the area where said figure seemed to head, our way back by the way. We stood still for some minutes, listening for any suspicious sounds, but the forest was in total silence. Realizing this, it made me somewhat uncomfortable. On our way back from the second crossing to the first, we started to ease back down again and started talking normally. The walk back also took about half an hour. This is where it gets really creepy. As we were about to reach the first crossing, I used my flashlight on the trees that were not too far in front of us. As I pointed my light on them, I noticed that there were two yellow dots right beside a big tree. As we came closer, I could see it more clearly. These were not just two yellow dots. I started to recognize a bald head with these two yellow glowing eyes. I told Robert to stand still, 
I pointed in the area where that thing was peeking from the tree. I was furious at him because he did not see it. I told him that he needed to focus on the yellow dots. When he recognized it, he freaked out too. I freaked out even more when I thought about our situation. This creature stood between the only near entrance slash exit out of the forest and us. We really started to panic as we did not know what to do. As Robert also started to flash on that creature and we both more or less shouted at ourselves, the creature went behind the tree and peeked out from the other side. As we followed with our lights, it stepped back from the tree. I was able to see more of its body. It was white slash gray, hunched over and its arms were hanging down. It slowly walked away from the crossing, moving one leg then the other one. We stood on the spot for a few seconds. Then I carefully started to peek in the area it vanished. I couldn't see it anymore. I told Robert to run for his life and boy oh boy, even Usain Bolt would have been astonished of our speed in that run. We ran through the exit and went back to my home. It was the scariest experience of my life. What I really find so intriguing about this encounter. This creature either followed slash stalked us very quietly through the woods for about half an hour since Robert spotted it on the second crossing till the exit or it was smart enough to recognize where the path we took would be leading us to, as we first saw it at the second crossing and then in front of us at the exit. It was also able to recognize pretty fast that we spotted it. I think by switching sides at the tree when peeking, it wanted to confirm for itself whether we spotted it by seeing us rotating light to the other side of tree, mind you, these were bad flashlights which lights only performed worse over that range. Last but not least, I do not think it was scared in the slightest of us. Even as I and Robert started to speak more loudly in a stressed voice, it calmly started to walk away. Description of the creature White slash gray body head looked bald long arms hunched body posture with the arms hanging down it must have been about 2 meters tall. So I saw something interesting that I didn't even think about until now but saw everywhere as a child and even now as an adult. Basically, there is this creature or entity or person referred to as the hat man. I'm not referencing that creature you see when you've had one too many Benadryl. I mean this thing that is basically a tall, almost abnormally tall, man with a large wide brim black hat. He wears a long black trench coat that almost melts into shadows and covers his body so you can't figure out his form and black boots. He has a wicked white grin and glowing red eyes. As a kid, I used to see him in dreams in the corner of my eye and back then I called him Jack due to the fact he was what I assumed Jack the Ripper would have looked like. Now. At 23, it's been a while since I have seen him but just last week, I saw him again when heading to bed. Does anyone else see this entity? Does anyone else know what this is? We had been away for a few nights and traveled back quite late. Towards the end of our journey, this was about 2 AM. We were driving along an A road in a rural area when something crossed the road in front of us in full headlights for about 3 seconds. It was about the height of a person, maybe 6 feet or over, but had short powerful legs and hips which seemed to move in a circular fluid fashion. It was not a deer because it stood on two legs. This was in the Midlands and the area is traditional rolling fields and woodland. In this particular spot there are no houses or buildings nearest is over a mile away. We drove back today as it's only 7 miles from home to look at the road layout and whatever it was moved into a wide bowl-shaped field dropping down to a stream. Any ideas? This incident happened in September 2020 in Aiken, South Carolina. I didn't grow up there, and we had only lived there for about 6 months, so I am not too familiar with the area. Some of these details are pretty boring, but I think it helps explain the setting and situation better, so I'm going to give them regardless. My fiancé, G, had reconnected with an old friend from high school, B, and we decided to rent his basement which was renovated into a separate apartment while we looked for a place of our own. 
The house is not in a neighborhood, it's rural in that area in my opinion. We had neighbors, but each house had several acres of land separating them. B had two large adult dogs, around 55 to 65 pounds, and our dog was a little smaller than them at the time. The dogs would run around and play in the woods at the edge of the backyard. Everything was good for the first few weeks. Then at night we starting feeling very unnerved if we had to go outside. I know it sounds so cliche, but it felt like something was standing in the woods staring at us. If we went somewhere after dark we would do a speed walk, almost run from where we parked out front all the way around the side of the house to the backyard, which is where our entrance was. Then we started hearing it. As I mentioned earlier the dogs ran and played in the woods so we were very aware of what it sounded like when a 60 pound creature was rambling around in the woods. This was much bigger, so much bigger. It wasn't just the three of us hyping each other up to be scared either. Anyone that came to hang out, there was a pool in the backyard, so we had a fair amount of visitors, would hear it and no one ever stayed outside after the sun set. We thought it was a bear, to be honest, because whatever was making the noise was huge, much larger than a person. So a bear is the only thing that really fit in our minds. A few months go by, and we find our own place and we were in the process of moving out when this occurred. My fiancé was up at the car, arranging the boxes so that we could maximize the space we had available. I had just carried a box up to him, and was walking back around the side of the house. From the front to the back the yard was sloped downhill a little bit. As I was walking down to go around from the side to the back of the house I saw it. Staring dead at me, straight into my eyes. I'm pretty sure my heart stopped beating for a few seconds, and I completely froze up. Some instinct inside of me made me begin walking again. I felt like I shouldn't run, but tried to act normal and get my ass inside. As soon as I got inside I shut and locked the door. But I immediately had to unlock it and open it back up because I couldn't lock my fiancé outside with this thing. I immediately started seeing these gruesome, gory pictures in my head. Pictures of me and my fiancé, beheaded, completely mangled and broken laying on the floor of our apartment with everything that was left in the apartment smashed on the floor around us. Then right after that something like, no, that's not what it will do. My fear of the unknown is making me unreasonable. If I just let it in it won't be like that. I kept having the weirdest urge to basically invite it in, which is absurd because the door was cracked open. Honestly, even if it had been shut and dead bolted, if that thing wanted in I am pretty sure it would have gotten in. I was torn, I wanted to call out to my fiancé, but I didn't want to startle the thing by yelling. I didn't want my fiancé to come rushing down to the door and have that thing spring on him and attack him. Finally I couldn't take it any longer and yanked the door open. I was planning on running to the car, but my fiancé was right there. He had seen the thing too, and he had been watching it watch us. The second it turned and disappeared into the woods he rushed down to the door. This thing was super tall, super skinny, and a sickly shade of whitish gray. It had brightly lit up, glowing eyes. One very crazy detail is that I swear the eyes were a golden color and my fiancé swears they were red. I don't understand any of this, but especially that part. The worst part of its appearance however was that it didn't have a mouth. Besides its bright eyes, the rest of its face was just skin. Tightly stretched, but perfectly smoothed out skin on its face. WTF? I have never in my life felt such a shock, like just a feeling in my heart that something was so wrong as I did when I saw that thing looking into my eyes. How do you eat if you have no mouth? How do you stay alive if you can't eat? Sometimes I worry that I honestly had the chance to meet and interact with a completely different species and I blew it by being judgmental and fearful. This thing wasn't like me, so I was deathly afraid of it. Did I have a reason to be afraid? If it had wanted to hurt us, I'm 100% positive it could have. My fiancé said he could feel the evil radiating off of it. That I need to quit beating myself up because it did not have friendly intentions. I know that this sounds so totally and utterly fake that it is absurd. 
I wouldn't believe this if someone else posted it. I'm just wondering if anyone else has ever seen anything like this, and if they have, maybe they can tell me WTF this thing is. For months after it happened I wouldn't talk about it. Anytime my fiancé brought it up I would shut the conversation down. I didn't want to even think about it because I was scared it would feel me thinking of it somehow and come back and find me again. We don't live near there anymore, and now I know that's an irrational fear anyways. I've never told anyone about it and neither has my fiancé. I couldn't bear to spill my guts to someone I'm close to about this situation. It would destroy my relationship with the person and I don't want that to happen. I don't have many people that I am close to and I would prefer to keep them. Once I found a huge footprint in my front yard but it had a juvenile print also like a child. Well I decided I was gonna cast for the first time but before it dried they came back and ran a stick through it and messed it up and left the stick in it. I instantly got the message as, no don't do that. So I don't cast I just take pictures. Plus it was a way of letting me know they were protecting their young. Another story was when my Sasquatch that was connecting to me actually took me to my mama's house used young bison in the dream they were chasing me around a tree Litito swooped me up we were flying backwards I could not see his face his big hand had me around my whole side he tapped me on the hip gently and said you're okay swooped me back to the porch of the house I turned around he was gone. I ran inside to tell my daughter what happened there was this random lady on the couch going through a box of teeth Sasquatch teeth. I laughed I said you're wasting your time, they are real and you won't find one unless they want you to. I walked back outside on the porch after talking to my daughter and there were square blocks of ice on each step all the way down and all around the patio each block had a huge orchid in it a flower I've never seen before each one was different. It was a gift. I only see a glimpse of see-through ships in my photos but I was blessed to see a Sasquatch in my flashlight spotted and I watched it dematerialize in front of my eyes as it was walking away it was amazing. My husband was given this beautiful dream we had a dying Sasquatch in our yard he went out to help he or she died and my husband began to pray and the big guy came and knelt down and put his hand on his shoulder and prayed with him then took him to the funeral and burial it made me cry. My husband pulled up outside from going to the grocery store, I was sitting outside on the bench playing on FB. He got out and began to unload the vehicle he asked me if I could help I laughed I said I think you can handle it. As soon as I finished that last word I got hit in the thigh with a pebble from the woods next to my house with a thought planted in my head that I instantly knew I did not put there myself it said go help. I jumped right up and went to go help. Mind you all these experiences happened before the Sasquatch ever connected me to any of the community. I came home from work it was about 11.30 at night I fixed myself a bowl of cereal and sat in my recliner I went to take first bite and something growled behind my chair and again had a thought planted feed the animals before you feed yourself. I had just moved into this house in 2013 me and my lab and a sectional is all we had, moved in so and no TV yet. It was late and we sat on the couch that night and the window behind me there was three distinct big growls but what was weird my dog didn't hear them. Then a week or so later same thing setting on couch this enormous tree knock outside the house and he sounded angry I actually thought the tree had broke, this tree is thick can't get my arms around it and it's less than 20 feet from the front porch. That one I did not move I froze. I had seen a rare looking bird the first year I moved to this house, it had an orange large bill but it was all white, I figured it was some pet that got loose. Well I went and invested into some binoculars, and then one day ran across this dark spot in the woods up in the trees. I kept looking at it and its face got clear his head was over half of the width of my 50 inch TV, no hair on the face and he was a charcoal colored skin. It was like he was looking right into my eye I said no way out loud and he moved and tried to morph into the tree and blurred himself. Mind you I was inside my house looking through the storm glass, my first instinct is scared then after I'm scared I get pissed. I had just let my dog out, I beat on the glass and screamed at him to get the f away from my house. 
Well as I sling the door open and yell at my dog to get in the house this dude came down the tree silent never heard that part what I did heard is his footsteps and the leaves he stomped so loud he was pissed it sounded like it was on a PA system in the valley. I shut my door, this was about 8.30 PM still daylight. I wondered about this for a couple of weeks then I just started talking to God I said if this is my path I'm okay. Then I forgave everyone who ever hurt me and asked God to forgive me then about two weeks later he opened my eyes. Now I can see others around me and other things like writings and numbers and they communicate with me on questions I have. It definitely has been a wild ride these last nine years. For some backstory this happened when I was nine or ten years old. My parents moved us into a brand new house. We were the first family to live in it. The house always had a dark vibe about it, like the energy was just off. If you were alone in a room you could feel someone enter but no one would be there. You could feel a lot of energy, you were never truly alone type of energy. If you were taking a shower you'd see a shadow in the room with you walking around through the glass of the shower door. You could be sleeping in the bonus room and wake up to a shadow figure in the doorway. It happened to my parents and myself but of course my parents played it off as nothing. No one was ever happy in that house. Now that I'm older, whenever I have a nightmare more times than not it's about that house or the setting is at the house. Now on to my title. I could probably think of a logical reason for any of the things I talked about above but not this. I know this really happened. This was not my imagination. When I was young I always slept in between my parents because I was terrified of the dark. One night I shot straight up in bed and in the doorway this tall, skinny, glowing grey human looking thing walked past the doorway into the bonus room. It had no hair, it gave off male energy. Time didn't stand still, there was nothing weird happening other than the fact I just saw this thing walk past my door. It had no facial features. I was scared when I saw this but because of the energy it gave off. Following this incident I would always see red glowing eyes in my bedroom closet whenever I'd pass by. I'm 26 now and I've seen a lot of scary things but this one always makes me feel the worst when I remember it. What do y'all think it was? Has anything like this happened to anyone? This happened in Northern California for anyone wondering. I need to give you a little information about my grandfather, born in 1933, Turkey, before I tell you the story. He was a very smart man who didn't like to talk about his feeling at all. He loved my mom but the only time he ever hugged her was when she was hospitalized for a month. I mean he was a normal, typical 20th century man. When he was young and single, around 1950s, He used to stay overnight at our vineyard to prevent animals from destroying the grapes. During one of those nights he was sweating a lot so he decided to swim in the river. He jumped in and heard what sounded like somebody else also jumped in right after him. He immediately got goosebumps and went back to the little cabin he was staying at, the cabin was under a walnut tree. He was changing his clothes when the cabin lit up with a blinding light. He opened his eyes to see a beautiful woman with long blonde hair before him. She smiled and said what do you wish from me? Her clothes were also shiny and the buttons on her dress looked like gold. My grandfather thought if he can catch her he can be granted with more wishes but before he could do that she disappeared. A couple of years later, just after my oldest aunt was born, he was with his friends when he suddenly got sleepy. My grandmother and aunt were not at home so he lay down under my aunt's crib, the crib was hanging from the ceiling above the bed. He was just about to fall asleep when he felt someone touch his nose. He opened his eyes to saw the same woman again. She was smiling and giggling when she said do you remember me? He jumped from the bed to catch her again and hit his head to the crib. She then disappeared. He didn't see her ever again but whenever he told this story he got teary-eyed. I don't know if it was because he was genuinely scared but I doubt it. I mean he lived in a tiny town with almost nothing and encountered many other things, like a gin wedding, but this was the thing that affected him the most. 
I looked through everything to find out where she was. Thought maybe she was a nymph or a fae but I'm not so sure. Definitely not human though. Do you guys have any idea what she might be? Also so sorry for my English. It's not my first language. I remember a couple of years ago I was outside at night around 9 or 10 and low in the hole. Behold! What do I see? Two giants, probably 7 feet tall and thin pale humanoid creatures walking around in the dirt road for 10 minutes they walked around steady looking down on the ground looking up at me searching for something even my wife come outside and she witnessing them with me for 5 minutes finally I started yelling at them and they left or walked into the woods and I wasn't gonna be the fummy who gets lured so I didn't follow them. Who were they what were they looking for? Even my dog acted weird and didn't seem scared of them or aggressive towards them like he is to everything else. He kind of acted like they wasn't even there or more like he was used to them. One weird thing about the creatures is the way they walked almost as if their legs is backwards or something weird I don't know what do you think. Almost a year ago I was with my ex in the driveway of her house at 2 am eating burgers. Just sitting in the car and having a chat, nothing special really. I noticed some movement in the corner of my eye and don't even bother looking because the neighborhood is full of cats so random darting shapes and the peripheral vision is totally normal. As time passes and our conversation continues I notice that she is occasionally looking at something up the driveway and I finally ask see any cats? She has a rabbit in her yard and even in a cage she worries for him often since the cats like to sit outside of his cage and bother him even when it's covered with blankets. She gives an odd response of oh yeah I think I saw something in the driveway she was incredibly nearsighted and it was dark but I overlooked the odd behavior and we continued to eat slash talk. Eventually I notice a much larger shape move in the corner of my eye and can't help but look back and over my shoulder to see what it is hoping there aren't people near the car at such a late hour. Admittedly it was a bit of a sketchy neighborhood. What I saw just outside the backseat window was no person however. What I can't do is describe its appearance properly. No matter how long it sat still my brain couldn't fully process what I was looking at. It was just dark shadowy figure roughly the size of a person. Maybe like 5.6 feet, I think it had a head and a body as well but I can't say for certain. It was like looking at a real life censored object. And it was staring back at me. A formless spectral thing that immediately rang every alarm bell in my head. My eyes immediately filled with tears, my stomach dropped and I felt like I was getting pulled into its gaze. As soon as I realized it was blocking the view of the tree behind it my fear grew worse. Any hope that it was a person immediately crumbled away when it moved. It was a sort of flickering motion as though it went from existing to not existing from point A to B extremely fast. Point B was behind my car where it then stayed for another second before flickering out of sight completely. I turned to my ex-GF and she had a shocked look on her face and was looking at something else in another direction. She turned to me and said you can see them too right? Realizing that I wasn't hallucinating and that there was more than one prompted me to say yeah let's go inside we got out of the car and when I turned to watch her close her door another figure flickered past her back maybe 15 feet behind. At that point I could physically feel four separate anomalous things bearing down on us. I could feel the pressure of them and my body was producing ungodly amounts of adrenaline. We made it inside and I immediately started saying holy shit we just saw that that shit is real? Was that spirits or aliens or before she cut me off and said don't talk about it stop talking about it we didn't talk about it for days but my questions burned because what I saw was so profound that my whole stance on everything was changed. Eventually she did talk about it and confirmed that there were three or four things harassing us that night. She didn't know why, I didn't know why. For the next few months it felt like something in my mind shifted and changed a little bit. I started becoming more perceptive of weird shit like this and became more paranoid. I even got messed with many times and it was driving me insane. 
That's another story so for now I'll leave whoever reads this with the first real and insane shit I experienced. We had been riding for about, I don't know, 9 hours or so, taking breaks every now and then. Then Michael says he needs to stop for a minute. We are waiting for him to finish when all of a sudden we see this lone figure walking across the trail. It is about 6 foot tall, very skinny in form, and it had an awkward gait, like a monkey. Or a man with a disease, almost robotic. Then all I remember about Michael is him saying, what the hell is that? Or something like that. But he sounded far away. He probably used a different word instead of hell. The thing is, we had somehow walked a bit towards the thing. Don't ask me why. Maybe to look at it better not knowing what it was. The creature stopped and it made eye contact with me and I could see it clearly. The eyes were kind of like a snake's, but yellow with a black stripe in the middle of the eye. It had green and red scales on the face and head. The red color was kind of like the same as the desert sand, and it looked like it had a sandy texture too. It didn't have a nose, only two holes on it. I couldn't see any ears or hair. A red mouth that looked like it had blood around it, but it didn't look like it was bleeding. It looked like a pattern. It reminded me of a chameleon, but it looked like a person too. The odd creature then stood up to its full height and raised its long arms to gesture at them, all the while making an unearthly chattering sound, before scampering off like a lizard trying to hide. The unsettled men excitedly talked about what to do, and they decided to just keep going and finish the course. However, the strange encounter did not leave them, and none of them could forget it. One of the witnesses would later say, when you read these stories online or watch them on TV, well, you think man these people are crazy, on meds or something or in need of attention. But this has made me a believer. There has to be more of them out there. If there's one, there's got to be two at least right? I know most people won't believe a word I said. That's the way I used to be. I don't blame them at all. But they are out there. Now I'm not saying this is an alien or a chupacabra or anything like it. All I'm saying is I have never seen anything like it in my life. But I am no biologist so what do I know? In 1972, two police officers in Loveland, Ohio, claimed to have seen a large, bipedal, frog or lizard-like being. The first incident was reported on March 3rd by police officer Ray Shockey, who saw what he described as a being that stood three or four feet tall with leathery skin and a face like a frog or lizard. Officer Shockey was en route to Loveland in his vehicle when he saw the thing on the side of the road, and as he approached it he first thought it was a dog, it was only when it stood up and looked at him its eyes reflecting his car's headlights, that he saw it was something far stranger. The creature turned away from the startled policeman and leapt over a guardrail, down an embankment, and into the Little Miami River. Officer Shockey continued to the police station, where he told his story to fellow police officer Mark Matthews. Naturally, I didn't believe him. But I could somehow tell from his demeanor that he did see something, Matthews said in a 2016 interview with WCPO in Cincinnati. Officer Matthews agreed to return to the scene with Shockey, and the two men said they found scrape marks leading down a hill into the river. Just two weeks later, on March 17, Matthews had his own sighting. He said he was driving outside of Loveland when he came upon what he thought was an animal lying in the road. Matthews stopped his vehicle to clear what he assumed was an animal carcass, but the sound of his door opening roused whatever it was in the road. The creature was similar to that reported by Shockey, although at the time Matthews said it was standing more upright than what his fellow officer had described. The frog-like entity watched Matthews warily as it moved out of the road and began to climb the guardrail. One evening in 1948, a young Bremerton, Washington woman named Virginia was going about her usual daily household chores. 
She had been carrying a load of laundry down to the washing machines in the basement of her rundown apartment building. It was a mindless chore she had done countless times before, and there would have been no reason for this time to be any different. But it was to prove to lead to a shocking experience, indeed. The dim basement was very large, its floor was constantly covered with a sheen of water that leaked from the walls. Virginia was used to working in this dark and dank place. Yet on this day something was not quite right, as she felt an undefinable sense of unease and dread, as if she were being watched from the shadows clinging to everything in there. She tried to cast the odd feeling out of her head, chalking it up to nerves. She would say of what happened next, it was such a creepy feeling I finally turned around and looked toward the back of the basement and froze. I was so scared I can still feel it. I couldn't move. In one of the huge holes in the basement there stood this thing. It was horrible. I stand five feet tall and this creature was as tall as I was. It had a bright orange colored body and little spidery thin legs and antennae on its head that kept moving back and in and out. That thing started towards me. I backed out of the basement and got up to my apartment and packed up all my things and moved. I was so scared. I moved over to Seattle to my cousins. No one would really believe this, but as God is my witness it really happened. She would say that it looked to her almost like a humanoid shrimp or mantis, and that for years afterwards she says she had potent, chronic nightmares. The interesting part of this tale, other than the sheer outlandishness of the entity described, is that this was in the basement of an apartment complex, and not even a remote one out in the boondocks. At the time Bremerton was a bustling naval port city home to around 80,000 people, so it makes no sense at all that there should be this thing, even if there were passageways to the sea. Where did it come from and why didn't anyone else see it? The strange abomination was only seen this one time and we are left to wonder just what it could have possibly been. In 1977, a woman in Henderson, Nevada, CH, claimed that her 13-year-old son and friends had gone out to explore in the area of Black Mountain, which has many scattered abandoned mines and caves. They hiked out across the desert landscape and climbed the foothills of the mountain until he found a cave. The narrow entrance forced them to crawl on their stomachs, using their pocket flashlights to chase back the oppressive darkness within and they eventually came to a circular room about nine feet across. There they found a pit in the ground, which had a crude ladder. As they explored the room, they heard what sounded like voices and the far-off humming of some sort of machinery. Looking around further, they apparently came across a rusty metal door deeper in an adjacent tunnel, with a rod of some sort lying nearby, which seemed to be made of some kind of aluminum-like material and with engravings on the side. As they examined the rod in the strange doorway, they heard guttural voices approaching and decided to hurry to the entrance from which they had come, taking the bizarre rod with them. As they approached the entrance, they then heard what sounded like the door they had seen creaking open, after which there was an ominous growl as a greenish humanoid creature began to emerge from the cave. The boys then turned and ran as fast as they could from this place, later telling CH about the strange incident and showing her the rod they had found. It seems the lizard man creature apparently wanted it back. That evening as the boys slept, something very strange happened. CH would recount of the sequence of surreal events. It must have been around two in the morning when my son shook me whispering harshly that someone was trying to get into his bedroom window. I hoped it was just a nightmare, or his nerves were still on edge. Quietly we slipped into his bedroom and listened to the sounds of scraping at the window edge. He was not mistaken. In the light of the moon I could make out the silhouette head and shoulders of a man. I was alone with my four kids, no husband to protect us, so I grabbed my flashlight, suddenly tossed the curtains open to face the man. There was a glare from the flashlight on the window, but past the glare I could clearly see a large head with ridges on the top other ridges on his cheekbones, and the glow of golden eyes. My son and I stood still, unmoving, both fear and shock kept us frozen. The lizard man didn't move either his hand still poised in his attempt pry the window open. He hand was large, with webbed rough, 
gnarly looking fingers, with powerful claws. After a couple minutes, not seconds, but long agonized minutes with our hearts pounding I knew I had to do something. One hand still holding the flashlight beam on his face and my eyes still locked into those golden eyes, I fumbled around in the dark with my other hand, hoping to find something to use as a weapon, is needed. He glanced at my hand, looked back into my eyes. He turned his head a little, as if he was asking a question, he slightly opened his lipless mouth, displaying four of his pointed teeth, and suddenly he turned and ran off into the desert. She would later surmise that the bizarre creature had come for its rod, and so she and her husband, and son, decided that they would return it to the cave, in order to avoid another encounter. They hiked all the way out to the area where the boys said they had found it and put the object by the cave entrance. According to the report, they just left it there and headed back, and there is no further mention of what happened after that or if the irate lizard man came for them again or not. TT joined the British military when he was 20 years old in 2008, as part of 3 Close Support Battalion REM. He was stationed at Barker Barracks, Paderborn, Germany. In January 2011 he slept on the second floor of Block 2. There were two other soldiers sleeping in the same room. One Saturday morning TT awoke alone in the room. One of his roommates had been out drinking all night and had not returned to the room, the other had spent the night with his girlfriend. He thinks the time must have been around 9 a.m., but didn't check the clock. He was facing the window and the morning sun was in his eyes so he rolled over. When he did, he immediately became aware of a six-foot-tall lizard-like being standing about 1.5 meters away from the edge of the bed. It was slightly transparent, bipedal, and slightly hunched over him. The skin of its arms and legs was covered in green scales, although the chest area was smoother. It had a lizard-like snout and mouth, and eyes with vertical slits in them. The being was largely unclothed other than a belt around its waist. Around the belt were what looked like silver-colored cylinders. TT estimates there were about 12 of these cylinders. Each was 2.5 centimeters wide by 5 centimeters long. TT froze not knowing what to do. He was both shocked and puzzled by the presence of this strange being. He did not shout out for help as he was trying to process what was taking place. The reptilian stood still also, although TT could see it breathing. It felt to him that it was surprised he had woken up. They stared at each other for about a minute. Then he suddenly felt drowsy and dropped off to sleep. It was as though the being had implanted the thought to go to sleep into his mind. TT estimates about 10 to 15 minutes later he awoke again. The being was no longer present in the room. He lay still in bed for around 10 minutes trying to process what had taken place. In the end he worked up the courage to get up. He picked up a small blunt object to use as a weapon. He then began searching all around the room, half expecting the being to still be present. After a while of searching and discovering it had definitely gone, TT went over to his laptop. He had the word reptoid in his mind, but did not know why. He searched for the word on the internet and up came some pictures of reptilians. Upon seeing the similarity of the drawings to what he had witnessed he briskly closed the laptop, quite unnerved. The reality that others were reporting the same type of being that he had seen was quite shocking and frightening to him. Not long afterwards he left the room and went about his normal morning routine. He did not speak about the incident with any of the other soldiers as he felt they would not believe him. For the next two years TT did not mention the incident to anyone. However on a phone call in 2013 his father mentioned to him a book he had been reading by David Icke called The Biggest Secret. In the book David talks about his theories regarding the reptilians. When his father mentioned this to him, TT decided to tell his father about what happened. In May 2014 TT decided to inform his superiors about the incident. He told two lieutenants and his sergeant. One lieutenant put it down to a dream. The other suggested he should speak with a doctor. His sergeant claimed to believe his story but could offer no further advice.
On August 26, 2005 at around 2.30 a.m., my two cousins were driving back from Minot, North Dakota. They were taking the back roads to get home faster. About two to three miles from home on Country Road 7, they said that they were just talking and noticed on the left side in the northbound lane a large, brown hairy seven eight foot tall thing was standing there. They said that they were going about 50 to 55 miles per hour and slowed down a bit as they passed by it. My cousin tapped on the brake and in the brake lights they saw it. It frightened them, and they quickly drove home. As they got to one of my cousin's homes they went and woke my uncle and told him that they saw Bigfoot. Then they drove to my house and woke me. I them them that I didn't believe them. But they were both scared and shaking, so I knew that they saw something. We took two spotlights a 5 million and a 3.5 million, my uncle had a 1 million power light also. We asked them to show us, in which they both agreed, after they calmed down a bit. We took my aunt's van and headed north. They showed us the spot and I asked them which way do you think it was going. She said that it might have been moving west. So we headed westbound on Country Road 6 just north of White Shield, North Dakota. As we headed about 1 to 2 miles west from Country Road 7 we turned northbound on Country Road 5 as we were spotlighting in the cut wheat fields. I was on the passenger side and my uncle was driving. We were both looking around with the lights. Then I picked up a bright red reflection of eyes. As I told my uncle to stop I noticed that this thing was on all fours moving west towards us. Then it stopped and seemed to sit down. It literally looked like a gorilla from the movies. As we stopped and sat there we must have watched it for about 4 to 5 minutes. It seemed unreal to me but as I started to realize that this is happening and that we don't have gorillas in North Dakota. That is when my uncle noticed two more sets of eyes behind the one we were watching. My cousin started screaming and cussing at us to leave and to call the police and game commission. After that we started to turn around and head back, I noticed it stood up. That's when I said let's get game and fish out here. When I arrived at my house, my cousin called the BIA and they said they will contact the game warden. My uncle and I told my cousin to tell them that we are going to go back out there and wait for the game warden. My cousin's husband wanted to go with us. As we started to turn on Country Road 5, that's when we noticed a very strong, rank odor. We stopped, jumped out and started to listen. That's when we noticed the truck lights on Country Road 6. It was the game warden. We flashed him down and talked to him. We gave all the information. He said that he would check the field out and left moving east with all of his spotlights on. That morning, at daylight, we started looking for prints. We found some impressions in the cut wheat field and ditch. The prints were 15 and a half inches and about five and a half, six inches wide. We stopped a BIA officer and told him that we found some impressions, so he took some pictures. The footprints pointed in an east direction. As we started to track them, we found three other sets that seemed like they were zigzagging around. After 30 minutes or so, we tracked it to a tree row where there were spots of cut hay put into piles and pine tree branches, two inches thick, snapped off. The sap was still oozing out from the break. There was no tall weeds around that spot, so we walked around and found a slough just at the end of the tree row about 200 yards away. I was at Hope's Nose, Torquay, Devon, England, and it was a very cold day. There didn't seem to be anyone about, which meant I had the whole place to myself. I had been visiting Hope's Nose quite a lot lately, as I really do enjoy the fresh sea air combined with the smell of the pine trees there. I especially like the view from the cliff top looking out towards Thatcher Rock and the sea, where I often like to stand and take photographs. I had just walked down from the grassy area to the cliff, when all of a sudden the surrounding sounds around me faded away, leaving the area completely silent, which was very strange and really made the place feel quite eerie. I looked around and then suddenly spotted someone standing down below over by the rocks. They were eating what appeared to be a ripped open fish, and I thought to myself, that this was rather strange. 
there's really no way to safely get down there by those rocks. The only way they could have accessed that particular area was by boat, as it was just far too treacherous to climb down there, what with all the falling rocks. Whoever it was, they seemingly noticed me standing there observing them from the edge of the cliff. They instantly looked at me, and then threw down the partly eaten fish. I immediately took a photograph of them with my Nikon P900 camera. I could see that whoever it was, they were wearing some type of black garb. At first I thought it was just a person, but then I saw its face. I almost lost my balance and nearly fell over the edge of the cliff in complete shock. I had never seen anything quite like it before, it really was quite hideous. It was the most unholy looking creature that I have ever laid my eyes upon. It had wide set black eyes with no sign of a nose. The creature then made a strange gurgling sound and then hissed at me in a threatening manner, which in turn made me shout out some profanities towards it while raising my fist in complete anger. With that the creature ran towards the sea and dove into the icy cold water where it then quickly swam away disappearing down into the murky depths of the sea. I was completely shocked and horrified as I really thought that it was just somebody mucking around trying to scare the SHT out of me, but now I knew for sure that it was something strange, and possibly otherworldly. There was no way anyone could swim within the cold water especially at this time of year when the temperature had plummeted to such a low level. They would instantly get hyperthermia and drown, so I really didn't know what to think. I had seemingly witnessed a real merman creature, and I was left standing there utterly astonished by what I had just seen. I thought to myself this is utterly absurd there must be a logical explanation. I continued to stand there for a little while longer looking down upon the sea wondering if the creature would resurface once again, but unfortunately it never did. At least I had successfully managed to capture the strange merman type creature within a photograph as proof. My life is very strange indeed, who else gets to witness such peculiar things within their day to day life? I once thought things like this were complete fantasy. But having seemingly witnessed these bizarre cryptid creatures firsthand, I can safely say that they are totally real and definitely a reality within our generated world. The old tales from the distant past of strange mythological creatures appear to be completely true, which I find to be very exciting. Scientists should endeavor to study these weird extraordinary events that have occurred over the years, instead of trying to cover them up or ignore them. Just because they don't fit into their scientific narrative it does not mean these strange things do not exist. This incident took place at 4.04 pm on the 8th of December 2021, at Hope's Nose Torquay, Devon, England. I have an unbelievable story to tell you. Are you familiar with the Skinwalker Ranch over here in Northeast Utah? I have a close relative that is pretty much the UFO guy in that area. He's been telling me these stories ever since I was a little kid, so I've been out to that area several times. I was there in spring 2013 and nothing happened. We went around other ranch areas and there was no activity. The next night, on a Saturday, something did happen, what I later found out through my UFO relative. There were a few teen youth kids who were driving in a tall truck about 8 feet high. They pulled up to the gate of the Skinwalker Ranch and parked there. They said that they saw an orb of light appearing above the gate. They turned on their lights and engine because they got scared. Then an even brighter light appeared and moved over their truck. Then something hit their truck. These kids got scared, so they hauled it quickly down the ranch access road to the main road. They stopped. I'm guessing, about three quarters of a mile from the gate. They got out to look at the damage done to this truck and for some reason. Apparently there are some girls with them. Well, once they got back in the truck, this is where it gets weird. A creature grabbed this kid, who was in the passenger seat, and pulled him out of the truck. It threw him around like a rag doll, bit him on the butt several times, and clawed him. Long story short, Somehow this kid got back in the truck. They were able to get back in their truck, drove away, and then talked to the Ute tribal police. The tribal police say there's nothing they can do about it. So, the next day, 
which would be Sunday, they contacted my UFO relative and he went down there to investigate. Meanwhile, there was a shaman and his wife there blessing the kids that were involved in this incident. My UFO relative said that he saw a photo on one of kids cell phone of this creature. He also saw the damage done to the truck. Scratched into the truck was the word die and he also saw the injuries inflicted on the kid and the bite marks. Now that was very unbelievable for me to hear. The crazy thing about it is this. I work at a hospital. A few months ago, one of my patients was actually the shaman's wife who was present at time that my relative was there to investigate. She told me exactly what my relative said, but in greater detail. The creature that she described, and also what my relative said, had to be a tall creature because it pulled this kid out of this window. That's the 8 foot tall truck and this creature had horns and red skin. It had a human-like face, but the mouth was distorted, resembling short canine snout. It had claws and bat-like wings. I asked if it was a skinwalker, she replied, no, this is something totally different. I was around 11 years old and playing at my best friend's house, like we did every week. We were in her bedroom, when her mom called upstairs that my mom was there to pick me up. We stood in front of the mirror next to the door. Between the door and the mirror, was the light switch. I switched it off so that we could go downstairs and then we both saw two glowing green, almond-shaped eyes between us and the mirror, I know how that sounds, but it was really what we saw. We both screamed and ran downstairs as fast as we could. We were so scared. Our moms didn't really believe us and we didn't do anything with it afterwards. After primary school we grew apart, but I saw her a few years later and asked her if she remembered and had any idea what it was. She remembered and had no idea. I still think about it sometimes and just really want to know what that was. The room was pitch black. There was no one else there and nothing I can think of what that could have been. I would love to hear other people's experiences with this. For context, I'm female, 27, from the Netherlands. I was on a hiking trip with my son on the dates that follow, August 20th, 21st, 22nd of 2006. We were hiking to a snow shelter, cabin, in the rogue slash siski division trail it is known as grayback shelter named after the mountain that shadows the meadow there used to be two cabins in the area less than a one eighth to a one quarter mile apart the other cabin was called kraus cabin it was named after the family that used to run cattle through there in the 40s it has long since burned down but the other cabin is still there and is used quite often the trail we took to the shelter is O'Brien Creek TR 900, it leads to a junction, the lower trail leads you to the shelter and the upper or other part leads to a division TR. 1207. It is about 2 miles to the meadow and the cabins from the trailhead parking lot, but don't let that trick you, you are in the woods. Other than the road to the trailheads in the area that all lead to the same location, there are no roads in this wilderness area. The first couple of days were very relaxing and peaceful. On the morning of the last day we were at the cabin, I woke up around 7 7 30 am and woke my son and told him I was going over to the outhouse at the other cabin, and that I would be back in a little bit. So I proceeded to the outhouse and well. Shortly, after I had finished, I walked out to the meadow, which has a little footpath that runs between the two cabins. The meadow is simply beautiful. It is your normal high mountain natural meadow that rolls and rises with spot of trees and shrubs that continue up the mountain's crest, it is a pretty big meadow. So, I decided to stop and enjoy it a little while before going back to the cabin. My son was 16 at the time so I figured he would be okay for a little bit. I probably stood there for about 10 to 15 minutes, just enjoying the morning sun, beautiful clear day. It was about 8 8 colon 15 am when I heard what I thought to be a fox or coyote kind of yipping and howling low, it sounded like it was just above me about 50 to 60 yards or so, as I was looking for it the howl suddenly stopped, 
Not like a fox or coyote theirs tend to slowly drop to a quiet drawed out howl, this didn't, and then I heard what sounded like a real low deep guttural sound, then the creature would repeat the same type call, each ending the same way with the guttural grunt type sound and then end and it would begin again. This went on for a couple of minutes, I carry a 45 pistol for protection while I'm in the woods, had some bad experience with predators and people in the past. I also make my son carry a little .22 pistol for the same reason. I didn't really feel threatened but I was very concerned about my son, so I drew my weapon, I will not fire unless there is no other choice, and I will make sure of what it is that I am firing at, I just don't shoot at sound, that's stupid. But, was concerned about my son big time, so I quickly walked half ran back to my son at the other cabin. I told my son that I was coming around the cabin so I would not startle him. And, I found my son white as a sheet and his pistol drew and looking in the same direction the sound had come. He said, Dad. What the hell was that? My son at the time didn't cuss around me, so for him to say that was understandable and surprising. We then ate a quick breakfast and packed our gear and headed out shortly after that. I made my son walk in front of me, all the way down to the truck. As we hiked down the trail we both would constantly check our back trail, it is only about one and a half, two miles back down to where we parked, but on that day it was the longest one and a half, two miles I think I have walked to date. And, we have not been back to the area since, which is weird to us because we have made the trip many times as my son has grown up. We started hiking the trail together we he was 4 years old and I have hiked the trail many times by myself before the day in August. I decided to join my bestie Karen for a 3 day stay at her grandmother's place on the res. Her grandmother lives near a place called Tuba City Arizona in the middle of nowhere but surrounded by rural homes. We go to college together and I was kinda interested to know about Navajo tradition. The first day we stayed, it was pretty chill, nothing out of the ordinary but then her grandma, not that old, around 67, said that a stray dog came out of nowhere and wouldn't leave. To me, it did act kinda strange and ugly looking. Black, shaggy coat, looked like a mix between a German Shepherd and a lab. That night, we were watching a movie in the living room, had big windows that looked out into the front where the cars are parked, nothing fancy, with the curtains wide open, grandma was in the kitchen cooking dinner and we were watching a movie. Next to the window is a medium bookshelf and where DVDs are kept. Karen went to put back a DVD we had just watched, but she freaked out because that stray black dog was staring at us through the window standing on top of the wood box outside. Not something normal dogs do from my point of view or hers. Usually my dog which is a house dog, scratches the door to be let in, res dogs aren't house dogs and dogs inside houses are frowned upon in Navajo tradition, meant to protect the house and owner, the other dogs seem to stay away from it. Karen opened the door and yelled at it to get it off the box. It ran off behind the shed. We went to the Tuba City to get some groceries, came back to the house. The dog was nowhere to be seen, nothing unusual. Grandma went to visit some people so it was just Karen and I about 5 o'clock we heard someone trying to open the door, both of us looked out since there had been no car heard and no dogs barking. Looking out the living room window to the door and there was the dog trying to open the door with its paws. Two paws wrapped around the brass door knob, standing on its hind legs. I though that was. Weird but wasn't really freaked out, Karen was. She opened the door and chased it off. Grandma came back later and Karen told her, Grandma didn't like what she heard. Got ready to sleep, we slept in the spare bedroom since it had two beds. One window with curtains opened a little. We turned off the light, but there was a sound coming from on top of the roof. Pitter-patter footsteps and scratching sounds and panting. It then sounded like it jumped off onto the large plastic water barrel they had. At first we heard what sounded like barking, but as it grew louder, the other dogs seemed to be barking at something also. But all of a sudden, 
Something was running around the house barking and it was no dog, nope, it wasn't. This barking sounded human, a deep male voice barking like it knew that we knew it wasn't a dog. Woof, woof, rough, earth just exactly like that, adding the W's, R's and A's. Then panting again by the window and we started freaking out. Karen decided to, in my opinion was stupid, open the curtains to look out. There was the stray dog on its hind legs looking into our bedroom but this time, it stunk and what I thought were two black holes in the neck, another pair of eyes twinkled, think of those ugly glossy spider eyes staring at you, and the paws were deformed looking hands with overgrown somewhat thick and sharp fingernails. Again. Both screaming and shutting the curtains closed, grandma came running through the door and seeing it. First thing she did was grab ashes from the fireplace, load three shells into the shotgun from under her bed, bless herself in Navajo and went outside to shoot it. Yelling in Navajo about how the thing wasn't welcome there and to get the hell out of there, for it go to linger somewhere else. Then both being traditional, the next day they called a medicine man to come over and put cedar in. He prayed over everyone with cedar smoke and an eagle feather, blessed the place, made us eat bitter herbs called eagle's gull or something and gave me an arrowhead. Apparently I needed to carry one for protection and a little pouch called corn pollen. Seems to work pretty well. The medicine man said that dog was a skinwalker, which in Navajo is a long word but I call them Yoshis, the body of the stray dog, which was killed by the skinwalker, made an illusion so we wouldn't know it wasn't a real dog. He also said that Yoshis tend to harm people by using some sort of human bone straw to spit at someone, think, spitballs only deadlier, and get human bones into them. Doctors can't detect it, but the medicine man that day pulled a piece of human skull out of grandma's right shoulder, pretty big, about two inches long and one centimeter thick, it was real because we watched him pull it out of her, that was intense. We were camping and I had to pee, so I got out of the tent with my flashlight and went not too far to the front of my car. It was so dark that I couldn't even see my hand in front of my face. All of a sudden, I got this strange feeling that I was being watched. Then I noticed this horrible smell that I can't even describe to this day, all I know is that it didn't smell like a normal animal at all. I didn't get a feeling that it was going to hurt me but I knew it was very close so all I wanted to do was run. I ran back to my tent and outside I could hear the huge, heavy footsteps and the crashing of the brush as it left the campsite. I have never told this story but recently my nephew and his wife were in the same exact campground and began telling me a story that was almost identical to mine except instead of it leaving when she returned to her tent. It came closer and smashed the side of their tent with its enormous hand. Then after her loud screams, left with heavy footsteps too. I thought it was strange that almost identical stories could happen in the same place. It just makes me even more of a believer. I, 25 at the time, F experienced what I can only imagine is a otherworldly occurrence when I first moved to the Sierra Nevadas about four years ago. I had been living in South Lake Tahoe CA for years, and spent a decent amount of time outdoors hiking, camping, and just generally enjoying the beautiful place I was lucky enough to call home. Now, I don't scare easy, I'm used to being be myself and I carry weapons with me everywhere I go. Being a 5 feet 2 and 110 pounds female I go out of my way to be sure I can protect myself. There were many people in the outdoor community who told me to be careful on trails and in the forests, I usually do these things alone, save for my trustworthy, though somewhat cowardly, dog, but I never felt as uncomfortable, confused, and downright afraid as I did in my own apartment one night when I finally relocated away from Tahoe to the city of Reno. Nevada. I had moved to Reno to get away from the isolation of living in Lake Tahoe, and though it is only about 60 miles away, it felt like a different world. Now the city itself isn't huge, and I was living in the north end of town, which is surrounded by high desert foothills and is somewhat sparsely populated compared to the more urban city center, 
but I never felt as if I was out in the boonies or anything of the sort. I lived alone with my pup, and we liked our little apartment. So to set the scene here, it was early fall, the sun was beginning to set at a much earlier time of day, which was exemplified by the the fact that the city sits in a valley, so sunset seems to approach much faster than in other places in northern Nevada. My apartment sat just above street level, with a window in the kitchen next to my stacked washer and dryer that looked out into an alley, maybe about 10 feet above the small street that went beside the small fourplex building. It was dark outside, and I was alone with my dog doing laundry. My apartment layout was an open concept, the living room slash kitchen area was separated by a wall which had a huge space cut out of it that you could see through to each room, with the washer and dryer tucked around one corner and the aforementioned window to the left of that. With the openness of the space, the darkness outside, and the amount of over all windows the apartment had, if it was dark outside and I had lights on, it looked like I was living in a fishbowl or a terrarium, anyone or anything could see right in. I made it a point to always close my blinds because of this, save the small window looking out to the alley. I didn't mind keeping those blinds open because I liked the fresh air, and someone would essentially need a ladder to reach me had they been determined enough. As I was removing clothing from the dryer and turning to plop it onto my couch to begin folding, I realized my dog was acting incredibly strange. He didn't want to cross over the line from the living room to the kitchen, which was marked by a change from carpet to tile. Though it was only a few steps, he seemed incredibly hesitant, and began whining and burping out small, concerned woofs. At first I just thought he was anxious, for whatever reason, he is known to be a bit of a weenie, but then out of nowhere I sensed this immense and insurmountable feeling of dread and displacement. I had my back turned to the washer and dryer, and to that small alley facing window. My dog sat facing me, almost looking past me, and his clear anxiety and frustration began to build as I was asking him what was wrong. He began barking a full alarm bark at this point and as soon as he did the sense that someone or something was observing me took me over and caused my blood to run cold. My logical response was someone must be watching me through that window, the only window that has open blinds, the only window anyone could possibly see me through, so in one fell swoop I reached for the overhead drawstring for the light and turned it off and faced the window to confront whoever or whatever was intruding on my life. As soon as the light clicked off and the room was dark, I saw what I can only describe as a perfectly round light, about the size of a small cantaloupe, directly across from me on the other side of the window. It didn't glow like a lamp or light, though. Its edges were perfect, and it did not hover nor vibrate nor move at all. At this point I was too stunned to move, and my fight flight or freeze response had engaged so quickly I had no time to really recognize or rationalize what I was seeing. I was looking at this thing, and it was looking back. I felt cold, confused, my hair standing on end, my heart racing. My dog had gone into full freak out mode and was jumping and barking and generally causing a ruckus in the living room, as he could see this all. The light seemed now to realize that I was able to see it and it looked as if it backed away, or at least grew smaller in size had moved to the right of the window. It flickered twice, and then disappeared. It didn't buzz away or fly away, it didn't zoom out of vision. It was visible, not visible, visible, and then gone. As soon as I realized the light wasn't there anymore I opened the window fully, and poked my head out to see what was going on. Maybe someone was up at my window with a flashlight? Maybe someone in the neighboring buildings had seen something and would be out checking for themselves to try and solve this odd mystery? Nothing. Not a soul. And what felt like deafening quiet. I closed the window. As soon as I shut the window I heard a solid three knocks on the larger window by the front door of the living room. As mentioned before, those blinds were closed, and though from the outside looking in it's likely clear someone is home because the lights were on in that room, no one could possibly know it's me, alone, in my apartment, right? I wasn't expecting anyone over, it was too late for solicitors, no one had any reason to be at my house at that time, 
and I wasn't going to open that door. My dog had rushed to kitchen as soon as the light outside the window had disappeared, and he was in what I can only call full defense mode. Now my dog is an absolute pussy. I've seen him run from cats, get spooked by bags blowing in the street, and he generally stays right by my side on hikes and while we're camping for me to protect him. This pup seemed ready for war, hackles up, eyes alert, growling at the front window now. I stepped into the living room, grabbed my gun with one hand, keys with the other and slinked back to the kitchen and out the back door to where my car was parked. I threw the dog in, started up and raced off to a restaurant across town where I ordered to go food and ate in the front seat of my Subaru. We car camped in a Walmart parking lot that night. I returned to the apartment the following day, my laundry still on the couch, no apparent signs of anyone trying to enter the place, everything seemed normal. I never experienced any disruption in that place again for the year and a half I lived there afterwards. I have no idea to this day what I experienced, and it wasn't until I shared this story that I heard the knocking and sense of being observed was a somewhat common phenomenon that people relate to encounters with skinwalkers. I don't know what the F happened that night, but I'd mark myself incredibly lucky if I never had to experience something like that again. Me and an old boyfriend went out there to shoot but I was annoyed with him so when we got out there, we split up. I took off across the road and was walking on old stumps for about 15 minutes while he was shooting. He then came running towards me yelling my name. He is 6 feet 4 inches and he was as white as a ghost when he got to me. He said that he said that something was up on the cliff of the hill that we had been on before. I didn't believe him until he started to shoot at it with his point .22, then after a couple of shots I saw it get up slowly turn around and start walking away. We were so scared we got in my car and took off. We came back the next day with a friend and tried to find something but we couldn't. Well there were two separate incidents. The first was on the 17th and we were sitting around a campfire talking when I heard something crash in the forest. I looked up and saw something staring at us from the darkness of the forest. I told the guys I was with and they thought I was crazy. I told them to grab their lights and help me look for what it was. It took off and went southeast through the woods faster than I could move. I got to the end of the clearing of the group campsite and lost it because it got steep off the back side. Two nights after that on the 19th, at approximately 3 am I was woke up by what I originally though was a woman screaming. I got up and out of my tent and followed the sound and it took me to an overlook of the Clackamas River. The screaming sounds were coming from upstream and I listened to them for a few minutes then from downstream I heard a similar scream. These screams continued back and forth for approximately 15 minutes or so then stopped. I told my friends about the incident the next morning but they already thought I was crazy from the first sighting. I'm fairly certain after hearing the screams that what I saw the first night was a Sasquatch. My friend and I were camping in this very small campground. It was dusk when we got there and sprinkling. We saw some elk just hanging out around the campsite that is how remote it was. No one but us were there. Late that night into the early morning hours, I remember being awakened by a loud noise, like rummaging. I didn't know what it was but maybe a bear. Then I smelled this nasty, rotten egg smell, which was thick and harsh. To the point I covered my nose. I thought it was my friend passing gas lol, in their sleep, but it was strong and horrible. I heard movement, thinking it was just a bear, but I never smelled a bear that bad before. Later, after reading some of the reports on here, I started thinking it was Bigfoot, rummaging through our stuff. I felt creeped out and scared. I never felt that way about a bear. This feeling was a lot stronger than that. So, I believe now, that it was a Bigfoot. Okay, I would first like to say that I appreciate this sub a lot. 
I've heard this story from my parents years ago and I was since then not able to let it slide. Every now and then I have a wave of obsession over it and I want to do research. Sadly, the internet is littered with shit stories like the ones you can now see all over TikTok. I really want to do my research, but all I can find is history channel, cheap TikTok videos and stories about 12 feet tall wolves on their hind legs. So here I am, in this sub, hoping to find more genuine information on this topic. This is also the first time I ever post about this. Let me start this story off with my first big question mark. This all happened, not in Navajo areas, not in America, but in Czech Republic. Me and my family travel to Czech Republic regularly to visit relatives. They live in a very small village in the woods. Everyone knows everyone. It's beautiful and we always go for our long walks in the woods. So much that you could basically drop me off anywhere in the forest on my own and I would be able to find my way back without a problem. Our stay is always about two weeks long and we share a room with the four of us. There is not much to do there, but every day that we are there, we go for about two walks. Small ones, about half an hour to an hour depending on which side of the forest we enter. Then, when me and my younger brother go to bed, my parents go for one last walk with the dog and return about an hour later before going to bed. About eight or nine years ago I think, it was a normal summer day. I skipped the morning walk, had breakfast when everyone was walking and joined them on their walk before dinner. When it was time for me and my brother to go to bed, my parents and grandparents were in the living room. I was around 12 years old and at about that annoying age where you don't want to go to bed just yet. At 12 PM, when my grandparents get ready for bed, my parents check on us before going for their night walk with the dog. I pretended to sleep and when the door closed, I pulled out my iPod touch from under my pillow. My parents would always stay away for about an hour, so I knew how much time I had to play some games before they returned. After what I think was half an hour, I already heard my parents coming back. This was odd because they like to take their time to enjoy looking at the stars. They never get off the man-made path at night, because wild boars stay in the woods and they might still have some younglings, so they can be more dangerous if you enter their home. So from the path you can perfectly see the sky. What was even more odd, is that they were not just calmly entering the house, telling the dog good night and getting ready for bed. They slammed the door shut and quickly went into the bedroom. I, who couldn't help but be curious as to why they seemed to be panting and panicking, asked them why they were so early. Instead of getting an answer though, I was told to go to sleep because it was way too late. The next day they didn't mention anything to me about what happened. Not until I overheard them talking to my grandparents about a huge bird in the woods. I had to ask and they seemed hesitant. But finally they told me what had led them to finish the previous day with such stress. They were walking on their path with the dog, enjoying the warm night. Little before their usual stop where they would look at the stars the dog, who normally always runs ahead of them, seemed to not want to walk any further. Instead, he was looking up the hill into the woods. My parents, who didn't think much of it and brushed it off as a deer, went ahead and walked further until they heard a screech from where the dog was looking at. It was very far away, but they stopped walking to hear if they could hear it again. After a few seconds they did and the dog started barking. Not very long after it repeated itself, but it seemed to be a lot closer. The dog, who was normally very brave and protective started running back home and left my parents weirded out. One more time they heard the screech that my father described as the sound of a very huge owl and again it sounded like it was closer. That was the moment my parents started running home too. Very quickly it seemed to be catching up to them, but this is where it gets weird. Not only was the noise getting way too loud, it was also getting lower and the screechiness had turned into something more like a scream. Not only that, they started hearing the creature that was making the noise run. They said it sounded like a human running. Two heavy feet were following them, only at an immense speed. When they finally got out of the wooded area the running behind them stopped, but my parents kept running and the screaming of the creature continued. 
It sounded like a mix of a man and a bird and they kept hearing it for a while. They ran all the way home, knowing that they weren't being followed anymore, but they wanted to get home as soon as possible. My father is a brave man, and even though they never had this experience again, he still doesn't go to that part of the woods at night anymore. Hearing him tell me this story and seeing the fear in his eyes still haunts me. I believe in skinwalkers, but I don't know what to make out of this. Do skinwalkers exist outside of America? Can they make the sound of any animal? This will probably be a mystery for the rest of my life, but I still cannot let it go. Me and friends show up at a campground and we were the only people there kept hearing the tree behind us move and this went on for a few hours and it fell or jumped out there was a branch moving 25 to 30 feet up. It hit the ground hard we shined lights at it and seen it walk off and this thing was 7 to 8 feet tall had AT at least 4 foot wide shoulders hairy and smelled horrible. My father and uncle have a story of living as outsiders, non-native, Caucasian, young people on the reservation. Their tale of experiencing a skinwalker. My grandma taught school on the reservation and they lived well off compared to the natives living there. From what I know, there's a lot of lore surrounding the Navajo Nation. Non-natives, primarily older generations, keeping their experiences and stories left unspoken, especially to those not from the culture. Forgive me if I'm mistaken in any of this, the culture, ideology, practices, or any other part. I'm just trying to tell the story my family has only spoken to me in whispers about. My grandmother, father, and uncle lived there for a few years and their experience was much different than the Navajo people who have lived there for generations upon generations. I just want to tell their story and get insight as to anyone else who has lived in that community and any other stories some people might be willing to share. My father and uncle are about two years apart in age. They lived in Navajo Mountain in the 1980s. My dad was 10 to 12 and my uncle younger. As it goes, they were always outside riding bikes with their friends, natives of the reservation. My grandma was recovering from an abusive relationship with their father and wasn't too concerned with their whereabouts, being it was a small community. There wasn't much trouble around, nor would they know what real trouble was at that age. Trouble wasn't the issue to young white boys on a reservation then. Pure terror was. It was a typical night without any parental supervision. The night was colder than usual, and the night sky was blacker than you could imagine. In such a desolate place, the stars in the sky would light the night. This night was as if the earth had moved to a different dimension, an abyss. The boys raced each other as they did every night, until they were compelled to force their brakes in unison. They simultaneously looked up, each boy's face melted from carefree, innocent and adolescent to unadulterated horror. The boys stood motionless, grasping their bikes with every nerve, muscle and strength in their body on the dirt road. To the right of them was a mesa, one they rode by every day. The mesa that paralleled from my family's home. The mesa that they could see through my father and uncle's bedroom every night. This mesa would become fear and nightmares to them from this night forward. At the top of the mesa was a roaring fire. Taller than any bonfire that someone could assemble. Bigger than a group of people could assemble. It raged and was unbelievable, it was almost as tall as the mesa itself. More unbelievable was the pitch black figure seen cavorting around the bonfire. The native boys with my father and uncle informed them that this was not a typical Navajo dance or ritual. Pits began to form in their stomachs. Friends of my father and uncle turned back around without a word and bolted back to their homes. My father and uncle threw their bikes to the ground and ran across the unpaved road into their home. The two came back in a panic, relaying what they'd seen to my grandmother, but she was unconcerned. A legend of the natives she told them, and shooed them away. They laid awake all night in their shared room. Not saying a word to one another. They forced their curtains as close as possible, too scared to look out the window and see what they shouldn't have to begin with. Neither could shake the images burnt into their memory, 
but the sun managed to rise and peek through into their room. A sense of release washed over them as the darkness had faded. The boys left their beds and traveled to the kitchen to try a second time to tell my grandmother what they saw that night. They tried to get a handle on what they saw, but it was as if they couldn't explain it. Again, my grandmother brushed them off. With a coffee and newspaper more important than their story, she told them to climb the mesa and investigate. The boys wrangled the friends who shared the experience with the night prior as they passed on their bikes. The friends stayed on the dirt road, looking up at the mesa as my father and uncle climbed up to see any evidence of the hell-burning fire they witnessed together. The mesa wasn't much taller than an average one-story house, so the brothers took less than two minutes to climb to the top where the nightmare took place. When they got to the top they were hysterical and also relieved. There was no indication a bonfire of that enormity, or even a fire at all had taken place on the mesa they had clearly seen it the night earlier. They climbed down and told the message to the friends who had also been a part of the shocking scene. Their native friends looked at them in shock, but neither said a word to them. They immediately turned their bikes around and proceeded home. It was never talked about again despite my father and brother asking about it. My grandmother and everyone else in the community refused to talk about it again. My father is a skeptic. He does not believe in anything paranormal. Aliens, ghosts, mermaids, you name it. But whenever I ask about the skinwalker he saw, he turns pale and white. He gets quiet, jumpy and curt. I had to plead to get the full story out of him and I could see goosebumps and every hair standing up on his arms when he shared his experience. My grandma took me to Navajo Mountain in 2019 to show me her history and to see how Navajo natives still live on this reservation today. According to her, not much has changed since living there in the 80s. I hiked and explored what I could of the reservation, as to not invade or violate any of the Navajo reservation and its beauty. However, I did feel a change in mood when I visited. My existence felt heavy, as if I wasn't supposed to be there or if I was invading on territory that wasn't meant for me. Not caused by any of the community there, but just by my presence being on the land. I will never forget my experience visiting and all that I learned about reservation life. My intention is to hear any other stories from Navajo Mountain residents or talk with some people with similar stories in the Navajo reservation. I climbed the mesa where the skinwalker my dad and uncle claimed had its ritual. I felt pretty normal until I got to the top and stood in the middle. I felt some darkness creep into me as I stood there. I've never been the same since. I was examining my field with my nephew and I looked to my left and seen something hunched over attacking my cattle. I yelled at it to get away and it stood up and looked about 8 feet tall. I ran into my truck and got my shotgun and fired once and hit it but I don't know where I hit him. I know it wasn't a bear because when it fell and got back off it sprinted like a human. I chased its blood trail to the river where I lost it. When I shot it, it gave a creepy scream like a cry. We were going to camp at Timothy Lake at Gone Creek Campground for our three-year wedding anniversary but it was full. So we started driving around the backside to try and find a place to camp and it was starting to get dark. We found a dirt road that we turned off on and we did not know if it was a through road or if it was going to dead end but we just kept driving. We followed the road back approximately three miles where it turned into a dead end. Being so late, we decided to set up camp. I was a little weary because the first thing I saw was gun shells but my husband told me not to worry, he would protect me. We had found a beautiful spot with a huge fire pit, and no one around, anywhere. At about 11 PM, we were relaxing, taking in all the stars and listening to the quiet wilderness sounds when all of the sudden, we heard what sounded like a loon and ended in a growl. Then, about 10 seconds later and 5 miles across, we heard another growl. It was like no other sound either of us had ever heard and my first response was was that a bear? My husband, trying to be calm said, no, that was a bird. 
10 minutes later I said, well, I'm gonna hit the hay, like a small little tent is gonna save me. The next morning we discussed it over coffee and my husband admitted in the daylight that that was not a bird and that it sent shivers down his spine. My husband is 210 and a badass. That is one anniversary I will never forget. When we got our spot the next day at Gone Creek, we told the camp host about our previous night and she said that she believed us and that there have been a few sightings in that same area. I live in a house practically in the National Forest, and I've always been freaked out. My mom had already went to bed and I was alone. It was about 11 o'clock. I was just sitting. Doing nothing really and I heard a high-pitched howl like scream off in the distance. Let's just say I freaked out a wee bit. This went on for 5 maybe 10 minutes. I tried to wake my mom up because not only was I scared, but I wanted a witness, but she wouldn't wake up. The screams continued and I just tried to ignore it. I was a passenger in my sister's car driving on Highway 22 about 4 p.m. I looked over the left where there is a hill that's been cleared for power lines and saw what I first thought was a large man come running out of the trees across the clearing. Then I realized he was completely covered in hair. I yelled to my sister to look. The man-like creature was over 7 feet tall and very muscular looking. He crossed the clearing in about 4 seconds, long strides. My sister thought it was a man at first and then a bear and then realized it couldn't have been either. It ran upright the whole way and its arms were swinging at its sides and it had very broad shoulders. My first impression was that it was very powerful and that it was trying to get across the clearing as quick as possible. We stopped the car and waited to see if it came back out, but it didn't. I would have gone up to look for footprints but I have bad knees and my sister was scared. It was broad daylight so I know what I saw. My sister and I have both lived in Alaska and have both seen bears so we know that's not what it was. I have never seen this before. It was about 8.30 PM. While taking out the trash at work with a co-worker slash roommate, a large dog approached us. It seemed to be galloping. It wasn't walking normally, like an animal should. Despite the many surrounding lights, the dog appeared to be entirely black. It was silhouetted just enough that you could see its muscle definition. I could see a slight reflection in its eyes. It seemed to lack a shadow. My roommate and I both expressed having different experiences and visions of the dog. When I initially saw the dog, I interacted saying, ah, dog, in excitement. For me, it proceeded to sit entirely still on the cement, staring, like a statue. What I saw was a large, fluffy, black dog. Lazy ears. Similar to a Newfoundland dog. My roommate expresses seeing the dog as a large, very muscular, aggressive looking black dog that stood rigid the entire time, staring like it wanted to attack. It was short haired, muscled, and had pointed ears. I jokingly stated that the dog looked like a skinwalker, not really anticipating that anything would happen. Then we immediately felt a wake of dread fall over us. Something was wrong. We both saw the dog's jaw open, almost as if it was about to bark. We heard a distant yet extremely clear, high-pitched come here. The dog immediately turned to take off. We turned around the corner, the creature was unreasonably far up the road for the short amount of time that it was not being observed. It was wobbling, crossing its paws, walking oddly. When it turned left around a corner, it seemed to nearly stand up on its hind paws, walking on two legs, just before passing around out of sight. The rest of the night was just as interesting. We had trouble with certain objects slightly moving place. Nudging a bit. Settling. It quickly became more aggressive. But then, just as we were about to leave, we heard a loud and persistent knocking coming from the front of the store. We quickly went to our cars. On the drive home, I tried to blast music and ignore what I had just seen. I heard whispering coming from my back seat. I couldn't quite make out any words. 
It just sounded like whistling, almost. But get this, I saw a random antique clawfoot bathtub. On the left side of the road. In a field. It was certainly not there the day before, or even that morning on my drive there. The kicker? I was watching the sidelines of the roads for animals, and I most certainly saw a buck. He was leaping out in front of the road, a good 50 feet ahead. I slammed on my brakes, but when I got closer, it was merely a bush. Perhaps I was just paranoid, but this is all very concerning. A friend and I were scouting for elk, it was getting dark so we started headed down the mountain, we were in two different pickups. My partner was ahead of me about 10 seconds, we were on the last turn headed down to the mainline APRO. Three miles away, I noticed ahead of me my partner was turning around and started to come my way, then he stopped and started looking the other way, by then it was dark and it had been raining. I noticed something about 70 yards away on the side of road, it looked like the back end of a large object or a car, we had our headlights right on the object, then I could tell it wasn't a car or pickup because there was no reflection or anything like that. We sat there approximately 30 seconds watching, at first the thought was someone was broke down. Then my partner had enough and started to leave down the mountain toward the main line, then all of the sudden the object starting running away around the bend. I had a great view where I was parked, all I saw was something roughly 6 to 7 feet tall running so fast, I saw long arms swinging back and forth and its stride was impressive, it was like a track star running with their arms swinging how they do, when I first seen this object it was a light grey color then when it started running it was a light brownish in color real light, didn't he get to see any parts of face. After that I caught up with my partner and asked what in hell was that. He replied that he seen it walking down the side of the road 40 yards away from him it turned away and started running very fast, he described to me the long arms and its stride it had, I told him when he drove off it started running away and I also seen its long arms and stride. We went back up there the next day to look for tracks, but it had been raining for some while. I was a believer when I was a little kid but once I got older I didn't believe in it at all, now at 33 years old. I know what I seen and there is Bigfoot out there. Me and my buddy were out looking place to gold pan. We just took off panning every creek we came to. We were driving down this road and I saw two tracks in the snow in the middle of the road. I hunt deer, elk, bear, cats. These were two tracks that were big. I told my buddy something's not right so we went down the road further and ran out of road. We went to turn around and heard sticks breaking and heard a loud walking just above us in the thick brush. My buddy got out to see if we could turn the truck around and get the hell out of there and a growl came from our right by the side by the creek. The smell was like rotten trash. Bear, deer and elk don't smell like that. So we left. I went to Joshua Tree a few days ago in an Airbnb with three of my friends. The house was a nice size and had to be accessed by an unpaved dirt road. The closest house to us was maybe a mile away, all houses in this area have private driveways too. On one of our drives back from getting groceries I had saw an animal run away from our headlights super fast, but I couldn't make it out. I assumed it was like a deer or something because of how big it was. But, all I had seen in the desert were quails. No big animals. That night I had a dream that my friends and I were searching for something and we were taken to a basement full of things and there was a small house with a red door. We went inside but I don't remember what was there. This may or may not have anything to do with my experience but I read here that dreams do have correlation. One of the nights of our stay we had a bonfire and did some stargazing. I had to pee at one point so I went inside and was gone for maybe 5 minutes. When my friend and I came back my two other friends weren't sitting by the fire. I just sat and waited a couple minutes for them to come back, but ended up going inside to check for them but they weren't there. We go back out and start calling for them and get no response instead, 
We hear coughing close by the right side of the house where the pool was. We immediately knew it was our friend because they had been kind of reserved. Our first instinct was to find them and help. At some points of the trip we had gotten concerned if they were sick or something but they ended up feeling a lot better. We start to go looking for them by the pool but we call again, and in response we just hear the same exact cough, same pitch. It was the same cough maybe four or five times. We thought our friend was throwing up or maybe smoking. Usually when we called for them they'd answer immediately except for this time there was just more coughing. The last time we called they had finally answered and started coming around from the opposite side of the house and the sounds of them walking and taking came from the left side side of the house just seconds after we heard the coughing on the right side, and they were completely oblivious to everything that was happening. They had no idea about the coughing and didn't even hear us calling until they got closer to the house. As soon as I realized the coughing was a lure for us it confirmed that something had been keeping an eye on us. Based off of what I've read I'm very sure I had a skinwalker experience. I'll answer any questions, I also need to know if I should get cleansed. Edit. This can't be chalked up to hearing things because of weed. We all have high tolerances and weed doesn't make you hear things. We were both very aware and I was probably the most sober. It was very quiet too, we had just turned off the music because we were talking. We ended up smoking later that night and the friend we thought we heard coughing has such a soft cough, you can barely hear it. The pitch of the coughing we heard specifically sounded like our friend, but as if something was stuck in their throat or throwing up. My wife and I drove up to the top of the ridge on Humboldt Mountain off of Road 23 and took the side road that leads to a yellow forest service gate. We decided to get out and walk down the road. The ground was patchy slash old snow. We noticed some rabbit tracks and bear and elk signs. As we were looking at the tracks made in the snow we noticed a trail of humanoid footprints. The tracks came down off the bank onto the road as if it was crossing over the ridge. The tracks were about 14 inches long, 8 to 10 inches wide. Even though the tracks were older, some clearly showed toe impressions. We had our blue healer, dog, with us and he did not act weird. We had went camping in an old cabin and in the middle of the night our dog started barking. He burrowed himself in between us and stayed for the rest of the night which I thought was odd but it was a new place to a puppy. The next morning we woke up to our two mummy bags soaked with weird musty smell and wetness that soaked into the wood floor of the open, no doors or windows cabin and was a huge spot. It was on my girlfriend's side and she was having her monthly. We knew the dog couldn't have peed that much in three days let alone one night. Then two days later at about 10 PM. We heard snapping of thick branches and something huge running and we watched to see what it was and all of a sudden we seen a tall shadow about 7 feet tall run across the road and up a slight hill in 3 steps. The dog flew into my lap and would not calm down for nothing until he was put into tent. The next morning my girlfriend, her mom and 5 year old son and I went to check out the area we seen Bigfoot and we found large footprints that were as plain as day behind the cabin and across the road. I wear a size 9 boot and the footprint was about 4 to 5 inches longer than my shoe when I placed it beside it. Hello first time posting here. I didn't experience these sightings myself but my mom and cousin slash brother did. These both happened on the Omaha and Winnebago reservations. So my mom was on her way back from the store in Winnebago and it was evening kinda dark and she saw something crawling from the ditch she said it looked like the Gollum dude from the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Its eyes were reflecting she didn't look back at it cause she was driving. Okay the second one my brother slash cousin was driving these people around drinking. He was sober I think this was on the south of the Omaha reservation country roads basically just trees and fields. 
And he saw this thing walking on all fours across the road it had pale skin and had like a long nose like those anteaters anyways it crossed and they sped by everyone in the car saw it, but they didn't seem to get scared so yeah I just thought I'd share these. Now to start everything off I live in northern Quebec and I've lived there for about 17 years now. My grandfather used to take me hunting out in woods when I was 10. He told me one of his stories when I was younger about a Wendigo that was possibly hunting in the woods. He had told me that live stock have mysteriously gone missing. The animals have been eaten or just taken is what his thoughts were. But his thoughts were cancelled out when he seen this giant deer one day. This deer he said was the biggest deer has ever seen as in his entire life could have easily weighed at least 400 pounds. So as he picked up his gun when he saw the deer he dialed in his sight for the range at least 200 feet out. When he dialed in his sight he aimed and bang. He said he shot the deer at least twice with a 308 LA Pua but the deer never stood a chance he said but yet the deer still stood tall. So my grandfather after a couple of seconds of thinking, I remember this very vaguely but he picked me up and ran as fast as he could. Once we got back to the cabin he was out of breath going downstairs into the basement picking up every single gun he owned loading it and cocking it. It was just me my grandfather my dad and my brother-in-law at the time. We all held our guns up high except for me with my tiny little 22 caliber thinking I would do some damage. We anxiously waited for this thing this beast to follow us into the cabin but after 45 minutes of waiting nothing happened. Later that day around 7 am. We decided to pack our stuff and get the hell out of Dodge but once we got back into the city we were all very shaken up and it was a very very quiet ride home. I'm 32 now but I remember my father telling me a story when I was 15 saying that grandpa went out to the same exact woods and never came back we have never heard from or seen my grandfather ever again. Now I know what some of you are thinking oh you guys just saw a deer and your grandfather overreacted maybe maybe but it was very very quiet the air was very still there was not a single sound to be heard so we think possibly it might have been a Wendigo but here's the thing. After my father told me the story when I was 15 years old I've certainly heard some things outside my window it's been very quiet at night at times s when I'm sitting outside having a cigarette but maybe whatever was in those woods when I was 10 years old started to follow us back from Quebec in those woods. Why do I think this you might ask? My dog Charlie has gone missing for two weeks now he always and I mean always comes back when we whistle and call his name. There has been no dogs looking like Charlie at the pound no one has seen a dog like Charlie so we maybe think that something from those woods took Charlie that's what my dad thinks I personally think Charlie may have run away so my question to you guys is what do you think might have been in those woods when I was 10 years old in Quebec? And did it follow us back? We located a trail in the snow that went from the road down an embankment, through the creek, up another embankment to a lookout type spot where you could see the road but not be seen. Then the tracks went back down through the creek and back to the road about 20 feet from the start of the tracks. Also we think someone was trying to lower it to the road because we found a banana peel in a tree and an apple on the side of road. Tracks look to be a couple days old. To start things off I'm not from the US, I live in Eastern Europe and I'm surrounded by mountains and woods from every side, it's basically a valley. Had a very odd encounter that made me read into our folklore and the only thing that closely resembles the described entities are skin walkers and I'm here to ask for help from people that have more experience or knowledge on them. A month or so ago late at night I started hearing growling. Or something along the lines of a big dog loudly snoring. I didn't really pay it any mind because I was on the phone talking to my boyfriend, turned everything off so he can hear it as well. We both just assumed some dog snuck in my garden. Same thing happened a few more time over the span of the upcoming two to three weeks. 
This Monday I was out in my backyard having some wine at around midnight and music was playing when I heard something like a dog or a cat running across leaves. I turned the music off and it happened again. To be honest I was gonna go up to check it out but my boyfriend texted me not to, and to use flash and look around. I did that and near the walnut trees I have in the distance I saw something resembling a human but I wasn't sure what I'm seeing because my eyesight is not the greatest and I wear glasses. So I decided to look trough my phone and as I was zooming in my heart dropped because it definitely looked like a deformed human. I snapped a pic and bolted back inside. That was three nights ago and every single night since then I feel like I'm sleeping half awake with the exception of last night where I had a very vivid dream of a close friend of mine acting unusual and having piercing green eyes, they're brown. Can anyone help with explaining how to get rid of entities resembling skin walkers if it even is that? I'm not easy to believe stuff like this but it made me really paranoid especially at night. I was fishing the creek and I waited in the creek to get past a willow thicket. When I got back in the open, the hair on the back of my neck stood up and I stopped and looked around. I spotted a large, blackish brown thing in the creek. I thought it was a bear till it looked up and I saw its face. I stood still and waiting to see what would happen. Then thing looked back down. Then to my left front a loud screaming grunt and the sound of limbs breaking scared the shit out of me. The thing in the water stood up and started to walk away grunting and howling as it went. There was a smell of rotten eggs and shit in the air. The thing I saw was about 6 feet 5 to 7 feet tall and walked upright. The arms were huge and longer than normal. On the last day of our vacation we were driving to dinner when my dad saw strange, about 14 inch tracks on the side of the road. The next day we were driving to the airport when all of us saw the strange tracks and there was about 50 to 100 yards of them. We saw the Bigfoot tracks in kind of brown dirt and sand. They were about 14 inches and at least 4 feet apart. There was about a 100 yard trail of tracks. I've only been living here at Snow College for a couple months, but something strange is definitely happening here. For context, I am part Native American of the Lakota Sioux tribe, and I'm trying to reconnect with that part of my heritage as I have moved out and away from my parents. I have always believed in the existence of skinwalkers, but the events that have transpired over the past couple of months have solidified it for me. At first, the occurrences started out small, hearing footsteps, growling in bushes, etc., but as the weeks have gone on they have gotten to be bigger and bigger. It all came to a head Saturday night when I get a frantic text from a good friend of mine saying that he's messed up big time and scared shitless. Now this friend of mine is a very imposing dude, 6 feet 2 around 280, and he grew up around Baltimore, so it takes a lot to scare him. So he's going through and telling me what happened and what he saw. A couple blocks away from the main campus they're building a new temple and this friend loves to walk around this area at night. According to him, just past the one streetlight on this road, he could see a massive dog pacing back and forth, east to west. He described it as a dog with the posture of a bear, toned build, obviously wild but no discernible fur on it like it was completely in silhouette. So of course I do some research and see the accounts of the Sherman family on their ranch, and Gwen's description of a wolf slash dog she ran into sounds eerily similar to what my friend saw. What my friend neglects to tell me until we were out there again last night is that he was whistling on his walk. As we approached the spot where he saw it the night before, sitting under the streetlight, was the creature, it was exactly as he described it. Huge dog, posture of a bear, pointy ears, smoothest skin I've seen on a wild animal ever. We're both rightfully spooked, so we head back towards campus, as we're walking past the humanities building, he tells me that it was around this spot where he was seeing shadow figures, he described them as having distinct human forms, and hearing what sounded like a huge animal running at him, he came across a bald eagle feather in the middle of the sidewalk. 
There haven't been any bald eagle sightings in Ephraim, from what I know. We hung out on campus for a while after out encounter by the temple grounds, and we both were able to come to the conclusion that there was almost like a line across campus that the sightings would stop. Against my better judgment, I'm planning on going out there again later tonight to see if I could maybe get any pictures of this thing for concrete evidence that we both saw something, and that it wasn't just our nerves getting to us. I was leaving the job one day last fall. I was the last park ranger to leave as I had stayed later to do some paperwork. After driving down the road with my patrol car about four miles from the job I came to the gate. I had to get out to open the gate which was kept locked. When I stepped out of the jeep I looked straight down the road about 600 feet and there standing in the road were two Sasquatch standing together. I stood there in a state of shock and disbelief. I as calmly as I could went about the task of opening the gate, driving through, closing the gate then driving ahead. As I said when I initially saw them I literally did not believe my own eyes. The animals saw me in my jeep and just crossed the road and headed north. When I drove down to where I saw them I was still trying to come to grips in my own mind with what I saw, and so I was looking for any other possible explanation such as a set of horse prints in the road or elk prints or something. I even said to myself, now when I get down there I'm going to encounter a horse or two or a small group of elk. But there was nothing at all down there. Then I said to myself Carl you know what you saw now think and remember exactly what you saw. I saw two ape-like, long-haired juvenile Bigfoots, they had blonde colored coats. I would estimate their height to be 5 to 6 feet tall, I got the sense that they were not full grown. I have no further evidence as the extremely dry conditions did not leave any tracks or other sign. I was on a trail maintenance on the Appalachia Trail. As a park ranger, this is your daily task. So, in National Park, there's quite a bit of burnt down forest and dead trees laying everywhere. It's a little difficult to say where me and my partner were exactly, but there was some area we stopped to take a little break and sat down on a log on the side of the trail. Well, after I fixed parts of the trail for about an hour or so with my partner, we decided to take a little break and enjoy the scenery. So my partner and I sat on a log on the side of the trail when suddenly we heard thump. Thump. On the ground about 200 feet or so away. That was enough to get our hearts pounding with adrenaline. At first we thought it was a motor trying to start, but then it happened again. Thump. Thump. And this time we knew it wasn't a motor or chainsaw. First off, any motor equipment is prohibited out there and second, whatever it was, it was thumping the ground and third, these were single beats if you will, not the sound of running or galloping. At this point I whipped out the camera and started filming for a few minutes, considering the battery was low. At first we got nothing so I decided to walk towards the area that the noises originated from, pausing the camera briefly. When I started filming again I was scared because I didn't know what we were going to find. Then I spotted a quail walking nearby, a big one I might add. So I kept filming and walking on and then suddenly the noise started again but this time it was just a little further away and coming from the opposite direction I was looking in. I can't really hear the thumping when I play the tape but if we hooked it up to a television set and turned up the volume real loud we might be able to hear it. After that we heard nothing else and left just shortly. While out looking for for recent signs of deer, elk and other animal activity last month, I was lucky enough to find summiting rather interesting. I'm a park ranger for five years now and I take care of one part of Yosemite. So I was driving west on a rough and remote power line maintenance road down into a gully. At the bottom of this gully there was an upper mid-section of a tree blocking the roadway. While this might not seem significant or uncommon at first glance, it was because there were no broken trees where the road was blocked. I had traveled this same road last year after the first snow of the season and the road was clear at that time. So it had to be put there during the winter. 
With any significant snowfall, the road would be impassable due to the blockage even with a 4x4. Upon further investigation, I found the tree the broken section had come from. It was about 200 feet away from where it was now resting on the road. Moving the section of the broken tree this far with snow on the ground would have been an incredible task for even three large and healthy men. Why block the road? The only reason I could think of is to keep local tribal member hunters slash poachers from passing through the area. There is plenty of food, water and cover for a large predator in that area and if I were using that area during the winter months, I would block the road too if I had the means to do so. I took some scale photos of the tree section, the road and the tree it came from. The section blocking the road is pretty large and bulky. I would guess the wet weight to be around 450 pounds and the length to be around 16 feet. There was no evidence of the section being winched or pulled with a vehicle by rope. All of the branches were intact and evidence of dragging was minimal. It looked to me that something very strong had carried it to its final resting place across the road. I looked for evidence of hair but I couldn't find any. I plan to watch this area closely this winter. While patrolling in local state park in early September, my partner and I walked to a spot when the sun came up that we could see a lot of acreage to try to see if everything is okay with the park. While standing at the top of the landing and glassing over the unit, we heard a loud noise that sounded like a whoop coming from a small tree covered hill below us and to the left. At first we thought it might be an elk, but in the large amount of time I have spent in the woods, I quickly ruled out elk. After about 30 seconds of the strange whoop, a second vocalization occurred from another low hill to the right of us at the bottom of the unit. The two carried on arguing until we yelled back. The whoop was not heard the rest of the trip. I am confident that the vocalization we heard was indeed two Bigfoots communicating. I have since heard the same whoop on the other side of the road at a Whitaker Creek camp. It is only a few miles apart as a crow flies. So I was a seasonal park ranger while I was a student. One time, me and my colleague walked about a half mile or so down an old road that had heavy thick timber that you could see through on both sides. And on one side it opened up to a clear cut. We stopped when we noticed cattle up the road about 200 to 300 yards. We watched the cows for a moment and one cow out of nowhere looked up towards the timber and turned and walked off. So not thinking much of it we turned and was heading to the truck. We made it about halfway back when my colleague and I both got a whiff of something at the exact same time. We both came to a dead stop and looked at each other with my look of concern and his of confusion, he asked what it was. Since we were in that very spot not 10 minutes prior I knew it was something that had just moved in. I spent a good portion of my life living in Alaska so I know what a bear smells like and have spent my whole life in the woods and know what death smells like. This was neither. When he asked what the smell was I slowly loaded my 338 and told him not to worry about it and walked to the truck fast and quiet as I put myself in between him and the wooded edge. The smell was kinda of a mix between a skunk, not as strong, rancid meat, and an old basement. When we got back to the truck I told him about the skunk ape in Florida and why it has that name. Needless to say I'm not too excited about a return. Last year I wasn't but 4 to 5 miles from this location and heard some god awful noises coming out of a canyon below me so I know something is wandering up around that park. I was just going for a morning patrol up in the mountains to just clear my head of the thoughts that I could not make go away. I'm a park ranger and my job is pretty simple, yet unpredictable. So I had been walking for about 10 minutes maybe, when I smelled something that I thought was a dead animal of some kind and all I thought was wow that stinks. And then a couple of minutes later I started to hear branches breaking and the birds all became really quiet. Now at this I just thought that a carnivore might be going after the dead animal. So I did not think very much of it and kept walking. 
And about this time I saw a big brown image move in front of me about 25 yards away and at this I started to get a little creeped out. So I stopped walking to take in my surroundings and see if maybe I could see what the animal was. This is when I saw it. He had stopped walking and was looking back at me and I saw his amber reflecting eyes staring at me. I tried but could not run my feet would not move. Now up until this exact moment I had never believed in Sasquatch but that day changed the way I will look at the creature for the rest of my life. This is a strange one. A little over a year ago back in 2021 in the Grand Teton National Park I had an encounter with a creature that I simply cannot identify. I have searched and scoured online and have not found anything that resembles the being that I saw. I try not to speak of this often as fear I will be thought of as a loon. During the summer of 2021 I was working for the National Park Service here in the Grand Teton National Park in the Inner Lakes District. This was my first year in the position. I was working at a campground specifically on Blacktail Butte just outside the main park. I was busy closing the campground and had two other co-workers there with me. As I was counting the money from the evening before I heard a very distinct but strange unmistakable howl to the west of the campground. The sound seemed to be coming from the base of the mountain. The campground is located at the base of Blacktail Butte which is a very small mountain just on the outskirts of the park. I could see from my location that the sound was coming from the direction of the mountain. There were three other campgrounds also located near the mountain so I could see all the other campers and employees in the area. For the most part there were no campers with their dogs in their campsites so that was checked off and nor were there any dogs visible. I was trying to determine what this hell was or if maybe there was a wolf. But the howl was unlike a coyote or a wolf it was very different. As I was listening I heard a second howl. Similar but not exactly the same I have never heard a coyote or a wolf make a sound as this. It's hard to describe really but it was similar to the recording of the Bigfoot calls that you can hear online. Off the top my head I want to say there are the Ohio calls. You can look it up. I'm sure it's on YouTube as is everything anymore but I continued to listen and as I did all of the other rangers in and around the area also did too. I began to ask the other co-workers if they had heard the sound but apparently nobody had heard the sound from their location. I felt silly so I kept my mouth shut. After a few moments I heard a very loud howl in the same location as the previous two but this one was closer. I again asked everybody if they'd heard it. Almost instantly they were acting strange and told me no they had not. And they were acting nervous and quick-eyed. Something tells me that they had heard it and were just not wanting to say anything. What did they know that I did not? And just as I was almost ready to pack up and leave I heard a co-worker on the radio calling with him. For a minute as I was leaving I could see a person walking in the area of the howl. Staying in the tree line but moving steadily up the mountain. I got closer, asking my co-worker if he had seen anybody in the area as he had told me that he too had been walking around and patrolling the area. I informed him of the sounds that I had heard, I was not sure what they were but they were coming from the back part of the campground. He got nervous almost instantly the second I brought them up. He got close to me and whispered in my ear that he's pretty sure he saw a tall dark figure moving around on the back section of the park but says he did not get a good look at them. And claims he did not want to that he felt immediate danger and fear now as he's speaking with me. I could tell from his voice and apparent body language that he was concerned to put it mildly. I drove a little bit further trying to see what it was that he was seeing. He had told me it was on the back section of the park. And then it's exactly where I went. After a little while I'm pretty sure that I saw what it was he saw. Because what I saw was approximately 7 feet tall and had the same dark color. I tried to get a better look at it but I could tell it was right near the edge of the tree line. It had already moved into the tree line again from coming out of a large meadow. I even told my other rangers and they would not speak to me about it. In fact one told me to stop talking about it if I knew what was good for me. This particular ranger has not spoken with me since and refuses to. After I seen this thing going to the tree line I decided not to follow it. 
And another thing to keep in mind is it was actually pouring down rain during this time. And even then the ground was hard. There should have been tracks because I did go back later on to look and I did not see any. Especially in the wet portion of grass where I saw this thing entering the tree line. It was very strange. How I did not find any tracks at all a boot or tracks of animals. After returning back to the office, I kept hearing the hells again almost all night and this time there were multiples one coming from the north end of the campground and the other on the east. My belief is that there was two of these creatures communicating back and forth with each other. So now if I ever hear or experience anything strange I don't really talk about it to my colleagues because for whatever reason. They seem so hellbent on keeping everything a big secret or conspiracy. Something I'm not really sure why but they refuse to talk about it perhaps the refusal of acknowledgement of this existence helps them better in day-to-day -day life coping but for me I'm trying to get down to the bottom of it. I would also lastly like to assure you that what I saw was simply not a person. Nor is it a person in a costume because what I saw could not be explained for it to be a person. The proportions were so off and distorted it would not make sense and the movement alone was different. I also apologize in advance for not having the most descriptive story and account but you get what you get. Thank you greatly for taking the time to listen to my story. I work for a city park and recreation department here in Colorado. I also serve as a district ranger for the National Park Service. I took the ranger patrolling training and love the outdoors but I'm not a trained scientist or a tracker. I was driving home from work one evening in 2017 and it was dusk. I was heading east on us 24 towards Berthout Falls. There is a turnoff located before you get right to the falls that goes to a park where you can camp called Rainbow Park. I was driving down the turnoff and when I reached the bottom of the road I saw this huge thing looking at me. I wasn't sure what it was at first but I really thought it was a bear, but then I saw wings and saw that this might be some sort of mountain lion creature with wings at least that's what it looked like so. I'm thinking it's a flying mountain lion totally confused because my brain cannot process this. It does not make any sense then it jumps off the ground and takes off into the air. Not only was this amazing to see but it was also mind numbing. It was huge and had a very large body and a wingspan far larger than my truck. The body was more like a mix between a human and a lion and the head looked more like a large cat. I thought maybe it was injured or I'm not sure what it was doing. I could see though that its wings were very strange also very alien looking to any kind of bird we have here on earth. I mean these are just my guesses I took off into the woods, drove up the road to the park, got out of my truck still shocked at my sighting and everything around me was dead silent. I noticed right away it was colder than usual and things did not feel right. I had a bad feeling in the pit of my stomach. I just tried to shake it off as best I could and things seemed to stop for the time being. Later on I went back to the spot where I had my sighting and there were huge impressions on the ground where it landed. Going through the trees into the woods I was so confused but also scared and in awe. I've kept this a secret until now. I would love to tell everybody more about what I saw and where. I wish I could have took photos but it all happened so fast. As scared as I was it honestly kind of reminded me of seeing something from Greek mythology come to life or something along those lines. I don't know what creature looks like that with wings but man it was something else entirely. Thank you for taking the time to read this. I'm a park ranger here in the Northern Cascades. I frequently respond to emergencies search and rescue and also do some law enforcement work myself. This summer I was working on a trail crew about 20 miles from the husband campground. I dropped back a few hundred yards from the crew to relieve myself and I notice a large sickly sweet odor in the air. It kind of smelled like bear feces but it was different. As I stood there I heard crunching twigs from down the trail and that's when I saw this large dark figure walking upright in my direction. I turned and began to hide behind a tree as I turned back to look. It was maybe only about 10 feet away, it was black, a bit shorter than I, no visible neck that I could see it. 
stopped at the tree I was hiding behind sniffing the air with its nose pointing up. I could not see any visible eyes I was rooted to the spot in fear and cannot physically move a muscle. And then it turned around, walked away casually in the same manner it had arrived. I stood there for a few more minutes to see if it would circle back around and then ran back to my crew. I refused to tell anybody what I'd seen. I hope nobody has to experience such a thing. I was working in the Redwood National Park at the time and only worked the night shift. I had never experienced a bear encounter in the park although I heard people been seeing them a lot lately. My shift was on a Friday night from 10 pm to 6 am so I had time to do my thing and catch up on anything. Usually I carried a radio, a cell phone, and a gun. The radio was a base radio that could reach the visitor center in case of an emergency. The cell phone was specially designed for some communication so I could know who I was talking to. It wasn't exactly a personal cell phone or work cell phone it was like a cell phone they give you that has enhanced signal. The thing about being a ranger at night was you can get very lonely. And the visitor center was closed during the day and these hours so no other rangers were even working in the park. There was a lot of traveling with nobody to talk to. The radio was key to know what the other ranger was doing and if they're nearby. I took my time that evening in doing my rounds and stopping to enjoy the scenery. Even at night it was one of the best perks of the job. Now the visitor center was located on the west side of the park and I would have to drive all my way around the west side to start my rounds. To make it to the west side I would have to travel through the Dip Sea Trail which is a very popular trail for mountain bikers and hikers alike. The trail is open from 6 am to 6 pm. At night it was very dark and foggy. I only got a radio call a couple of times during my shift but never did I see another ranger. As I was driving along the Dipsy Trail the fog was thick and you could not see up the road ahead. As I was traveling about 20 miles an hour and would use the brake lights of the car to see where I was going at some points and as I came around the corner I saw what I thought was a mountain biker standing next to a tree making note of him. I made a comment out loud about how he should not be here and the trail is closed. As I got closer I noticed that this person wasn't actually wearing any clothes and was facing the tree. It was maybe about 3 feet away from the fog light of the car and their back was facing me. I asked out loud several times and the person did not move. All of my lights were on now. I was now about 10 feet from this person and I kept asking if they were okay and if they needed help. I began to get scared I asked again if they needed help and turned on the siren. I still did not get a response. Something was wrong I got to about 5 feet away the tree the person was standing next to. That's when this person just fell over. They were dead and their face had been carved away literally like with a knife. Think of how a pumpkin is. It was as somebody had burrowed into their skull and the face was gone. I have no idea how it was possible that they were actually standing up and how they managed to fall over. It reminded me of something that would happen to you in a horror movie but I bailed out of there. And after describing to the other rangers what I saw they agreed to stay at the station with me. And we'd go back to the trail to check it out. So we all ended up going down there within 10 minutes the area where I originally saw the person on the trail. But as I got closer to the same spot now I saw a different figure. A naked woman, I slowed down and she began looking in my direction. The only issue is I passed right through her and her eyes began glowing red right after she passed my vehicle or should I say walked through my vehicle and then disappeared entirely. I mean the other rangers were pretty scared and freaked out. We weren't exactly sure what to do. We just wanted to come out of the park. We wanted to be done and by the way there was no accounts of that body anymore. As a ranger I should have called the body in and got for help but I was so spooked that I couldn't help but leave. This is when we went to retrieve that body that I'm talking about. The one with the burned out face. There were no signs of it no signs of blood attack, a murder anything not even a trail or feet marks. It's as if the body just mysteriously disappeared. And then the apparition of the naked woman with glowing eyes. 
I'm not sure what to think about that last I heard and lastly my colleagues have heard this trail and park is not haunted but either way I'm not sure to think about it. Maybe it was a demonic encounter, maybe it was something else. I've been in many training sessions and have seen other rangers have paranormal experiences before. I've thought about telling somebody outside my work circle. I've just been very hesitant too. People will probably laugh at me potentially think I'm crazy but I witnessed something that I did not understand. It changed me forever because it scared me and proved to me that those things sometimes you see in horror movies are true. I've thought a lot about this over the years and have finally decided to open up and talk to somebody. I live in Portland, Oregon, but I work at Mount Rainier National Park as a backcountry ranger. I would like to remain anonymous, so please refrain from including my name on the night of the 5th of September 2015. I was driving home from work after a busy day of trail maintenance on the Ara Loop. I was about 15 miles east of Paradise at about 1 a.m. and I was doing about 50 miles per hour. I was driving on the Lewis River Road. It was a beautiful night and I was enjoying the drive. I had my headlights on high beam and was watching my mirrors to avoid deer as they frequent this area. And in the past I've nearly totaled my car in the winter when a large buck jumped out. As I rendered the corner coming out of the forest I noticed a large dark figure on the side of the road. Now immediately I'm on edge because in my mind I'm imagining this being a large buck about to jump out from my car and I could not afford the time to make another car payment. I immediately slam on my brakes because I wasn't sure what was going to happen. And I realized it was not a deer because this thing was standing beside a tree on the road's shoulder. So I slowed down even more. I began to focus what little eyesight I had on this creature and I could see that it was very very large. Probably about 8 feet tall, covered in shaggy long hair that looked very thick and matted. It was hard to tell on the lighting conditions and shadows any real details of the face but. I could tell that it turned to look at me directly and then stopped and stepped off the road into the field. It was obviously aware of my presence and did not seem surprised by me. It continued to walk away from the road into the field, lumbering on two legs. I'm telling you now it was not a bear because it never walked like one. It reminded me of a person on two legs. The entire time, the comfortability of bipedally walking. It walked for about a minute maybe a minute and a half before I could not see it anymore. I was in shock to say the least. I drove very slowly for a minute to see if maybe I could see it again but I eventually lost sight of it. Even though I was in shock I did not feel too scared. I did not feel threatened, I was just in total awe at what I just saw. It was so huge and very obviously not a bear or a person in a suit. Why would somebody be out here in the middle of nowhere? It also walked very naturally on two legs. I went back to the spot the next day and measured a tree it was standing beside. That's how I know it was around eight and a half feet tall. I've been a park ranger for the better half of eight years now and have never seen anything like this before in my life. I have had other interesting experiences though in the backcountry but they were mostly while working and related to the environment. People are always throwing around the term Bigfoot but I have no idea what this was. I'm ignorant. Please excuse me and thank you for your time. If you can provide any information that would be most helpful, thank you again. I'm a former U.S. park ranger. I have been assigned to various parks all throughout the USA. Back in 1991 I was assigned to the Isle Royale National Park in Lake Superior. It was my job to patrol almost 100 miles of back country and write reports on the conditions of several trails. I would rotate my patrol route every couple of weeks to avoid getting too familiar with the back country and kept myself alert during the first part of late August. I rotated to the west end of the island to the Greenstone area. The Greenstone is located on the northeastern part of the island. It is like a pile of massive rocks on a point overlooking Lake Greenstone Cove. The area around this point is a well-known spot for the Native Americans for making tools and other items from the Greenstone and for fishing. 
The area is also reputed to be very haunted and some of the stories are quite horrifying. This place is covered in very thick spruce forest and there are only a couple of trails that even cut through. One of the trails is called the Greenstone Shore Trail. It cuts through the forest and is on the shore of the lake. It is a very isolated area and the only way in or out of the area is by barge or via the Greenstone Shore Trail. So I was patrolling the southern point of the trail when I came across a clearing. I stood there and began to hear a very strange noise. The noise sounded like a long low moan that changed to a very loud sputtering noise. I stood there and listened for a few more moments and decided that I'd better go check it out. I walked into the clearing skinning the area. I could see a series of old fire pits in the area and something dark lying on the ground about 50 feet away. It was heavy, whatever this was which I initially thought was a bear turned out to be on four legs. So I took up my binoculars and looked but couldn't really see any details on the animal. I thought it might be a bear but its shape was beginning to look too big. I stood there for a while as it was still sputtering and moaning and keep in mind it was kind of tucked away in tall grass. I began to believe that maybe this was a sick or injured bear or animal so I ventured around to see if I can get a better view by getting closer to it without directly in its line of sight. When I did the animal disappeared entirely but the groaning sound stayed. There's no way something this large could have gotten up and disappeared from my sight that easily. Something was off. I could feel it. After it disappeared the woods around me went completely silent and I had this creeping feeling in my stomach that I needed to leave now, and that I was in imminent danger and then the horrifying thought raced in my brain. What if it was a ploy, what if I was dealing with a large predator and that was just a way to lure me into the open where I'd be more vulnerable? As these thoughts went through my head I did not think rationally or clearly. I just got out of the area and did my best to quelch my emotions. Now two days after the incident in question I was in the ranger station filling out reports and the dispatcher began yelling for me to come over the radio. It was a message from the Greenstone ranger station. There had been an accident a couple miles north of the Greenstone station. They required my assistance. I got on the boat and headed over there, I met two other boats from the station and we headed to where the accident occurred. Apparently four people in the accident, who were injured were being chased by some large black animal that they were convinced was Bigfoot. They explained that it had a large snout huge teeth and large claws we took their statements. They were so scared and shaken up. They had an accident by getting into their boat smacking it into each other unfortunately. They're all okay with only minor injuries but the boats well that's a different story. I often reflect back and wonder if there's any correlation to the large figure I saw in the tall grass there in that meadow and what they described as seeing from the distance I was at. It was really hard to tell what exactly I was looking at. Even though it resembled a bear I could tell it was a large animal. But because of how it was laying and how much of its body was truly concealed there was no way to really know what it was for sure. Unless I got closer but the strange groaning and money sounds. I'm not sure how to describe it or really write it off or rationalize it. I've heard bears make noise even deer dying and injured but this was different. It was so bassy in tone and the sound was different. I guess it's safe to say that I'm a little creeped out by the whole thing and after taking these witnesses statements I really don't believe them to be making up stories. They were all visibly shaken the one man. The bigger older man was actually shaking really bad and he almost had tears in his eyes as we were all detailing the same story. Even though this was many years ago now, it sticks with me just like it happened last week. I have spent 20 years in park and recreational management, currently serving in the National Park Service as a superintendent. I've seen and heard many strange things while working in the back country. This email is to report an encounter I had with a cat thing while in the back country. This occurred during the winter of 2010 and going into 2011. It was in the early afternoon. I left the ranger cabin and traveled four and a half miles up the trail to a back country emergency shelter. This shelter is replacement of the original shelter which burned down in the late 1980s. 
It had been seen by many uses but the last six years especially. I had really been the only person to stay there. I arrived at the shelter by 4 p.m. and immediately got my gear outside. I was working on my snowshoes when I heard a distant bellowing howl. It was a howl that I never heard before. I am very well versed in all the howls of wolf coyotes and other animals but this was different, way different. It was much deeper, had a lot more growl and distortion to the timbre. It was definitely not a wolf elk bear or any mammal that I'm familiar with for the matter. The noise was a bellow howl that went for about a minute with a slight pause between the bellows and howls. It was a very very strong howl but also as terrified as I was by hearing this I was curious. I grabbed my pack and my snowshoes. Began walking toward the source of the vocalization. I walked about three-fourths a mile to a large rise on the ridgeline. As I walked towards the ridge that's when I begin to notice several deer carcasses. Deer by the way are abundant in the area. I see them all the time we actually have several types but the most common is white tail. I immediately thought something was hunting them. Upon closer inspection the three visible carcasses I've seen were very horribly mutilated. What's also more strange is that the corpses were not eaten on they were just ripped up. The doe the closest one that I was to had her neck ripped open and her head was missing. Something visibly tore this animal's head off but there were no bite marks or claw marks on the animal. It just seemed like a brutal kill. Something wasn't right as that thought is in my head I hear and notice the bellow slash howl again. And this time it appeared more powerful and closer. I decided to get up the ridge and see if I could see what was responsible assuming that the bellowing and howling was the creature responsible. I quickly moved up the ridge but as I neared the top the bellows and howls happen again. Only this time they were getting even closer. I approached the ridge top and heard the noise coming from a small meadow. As I looked across the small meadow I noticed this creature. It was standing on the other side of the ridge top. It was this strange looking thing I call it a cat, because that's the closest that it resembled but it was far too distorted. Far too different. It was much more like if you mixed a person or a human being with a lion and a mountain lion. I very visibly remember the brindle coloring and the mane around its neck. It was definitely larger than a mountain lion. The animal was facing my direction but at about a 45 degree angle. I could see its front quarters very well as I watched it staring at it intently. It never appeared to move and the sound it was making completely stopped and the entire time I was staring at it I was trying to process what animal am I seeing. But I could not make it out. It was on all fours and looked very very strange. I want to say I was probably there for 5 minutes but in actuality I was probably only staring at it for maybe 30 seconds at 45 at most. The thought had occurred to me that I better leave now. Before whatever this giant cat is notices me and decides to make me its next meal. Or do what it did to me like it did to the deer. Now as I'm going down the ridgeline I could hear something coming up the hill behind. I turned around and looked up the trail, there were two deer running. When I turned back down I could see the cat now moving in my direction. So I walked quickly to the far edge of the ridge and saw this thing now walking about 75 yards. As it walked up the hill it would stop every few steps and look back at me. It continued this walking looking behavior until it was completely out of sight far over the ridge line. I stayed there for about 5 minutes and I never heard it bellow or howl again after that. I very hastily walked back down the hill, packed up my gear and began my 6 mile walk back all the way around the cabin the long way. I've never seen this creature again and I think it's safe to presume that this was the creature's territory and it was hunting the deer because the portion of backcountry I was on that entire ridgeline is very untouched. It was a portion even I'm very unfamiliar with. As the years have gone on I've told a few friends and colleagues. They're convinced I just saw a mountain lion from far away but, but if it really was a mountain lion we're talking about a severely deformed mountain lion. I know what mountain lions look like this was not it. I have seen many mountain lions in my career. I do think it was hunting the deer on the ridge line and possibly I irritated it. 
I've also come across several other eyewitness stories similar to mine describing a creature very similar in the National Park Service but have never come across any real concrete evidence of its existence, other than my one eyewitness story that I have myself. I work as a seasonal park ranger here at Lawson National Park in California. I recently rediscovered your YouTube channel I had forgotten it a long time ago. You might remember me I was the individual who contacted you via email while I was a student I wanted to let you know about that Lawson National Park. We've had a lot of strange sightings including a supposed mountain goat, wolf-like creature, We've also had more than one eyewitness reported of a thing that had all the physical characteristics of a Bigfoot. Except it walked on all fours and was very very ugly with a flat human face in fact one such sightings included my brother and I. We are both rangers and at the time and at the time were also two working seasonally. One Friday afternoon my brother and I, who were working together came across a pile of scat of what we thought was a goat but we knew it was not mountain goat feces. It looked different. We've seen mountain goats around here before and the scat was much larger and was darker in color. It appeared fresh and still kind of wet. We have no idea what this could have been. There are no other animals in the park that produce scat this large. We also have had people report to us that there is a massive black wolf in the park that's twice the size of a regular wolf. People have claimed that it had red eyes and was the size of a large large Great Dane and this of course has still been unconfirmed. I have seen a lot of strange things in the park myself that I have no explanation for what they could be. There was even a woman that had reported seeing what she referred to as Goat Man but after going on a search we could not find anything. Of course as weird as it is when we go looking for these things the woods always seems to have a way of going quiet. And getting this feeling like you're being watched now that might just be my paranoia but I feel a little more level-headed than letting my paranoia control me like that, and just imagining things. I'm not exactly sure what all these sightings are about and I simply don't believe they are all just simply misidentifications. And speaking of which there is a gentleman I spoke to about 7 months ago who was over on the east section of the park and at one point or another was actually attacked by what he describes as a bipedal coyote or wolf. He wasn't sure which. This thing actually tore aside in his tent during the night time while he was sleeping and attacked him. It tore his arm pretty well and fortunately he did not have to lose his arm and they were able to save it but he shot this thing right in the face multiple times until it finally fled. He said had he not been heavily armed with his Glock he has no idea what would have happened. He probably would not be alive. He said this creature looked evil and was very very big. But he kept saying coyote more than heated wolf. And said it looked very human in the way its eyes looked. Not in a literal sense he described but the intelligence. The intent behind what it was doing he described it as if it was wanting to not only hurt him but know that it wanted to hurt him. Simply put, it was just evil. Now me personally I have no way to explain that away but I figured that you enjoy reports like that so that's why I'm bringing it to your attention. I know there are a lot of weird things out here in the national parks, especially here in the state of California. I was a ranger a climbing ranger out the Algany State Park in New York from 2003 to 2008. This park is well known for its free roaming bison herd and the number of also unsolved murders that occurred there the past 150 years or so. During the 4th of July weekend in 2007 I had an experience that I just could not explain. I was assigned to the eastern side of the park to staff the entrance booth and hiking trails and the other side of Route 98 from the main campground. There was also a designated picnic area. That was quite further back in the woods. I drove into the park and parked my Hummer in the parking lot behind the picnic area. After sitting in the vehicle for a few moments then got out to open the gate that leads to the picnic area. As I was walking back out to my vehicle I noticed a family of four sitting on the table. They were in the process of unpacking their food. I greeted them kindly, opened the gate and drove up to the booth. 
I was expecting that I would be the only ranger on duty for the rest of the weekend. I was wrong. I was actually the third ranger's sign there. I arrived a little bit before noon and one ranger had just left. It was a beautiful day and people were out in droves. I had quite a bit of traffic at one point. I was helping three separate groups of people, all their own issues of some kind. There was a delay in water supply apparently so I was calling utility companies to try and fix them. I also had to give two people different directions since they weren't sure where to go. I'm not sure how long I'd been occupied with these tasks but I was beginning to notice it was getting a little darker than usual earlier. The daylight savings time changed had just occurred and I was getting ready to check the woods on the other side of the picnic area, then I noticed a car coming down the side of the road. The road was a secondary access and led to a small picnic area and the Alcane Cemetery which is quite old. I was surprised to see the car come out of nowhere so I got back behind the booth and watched it drove up to the area and stopped. I was puzzled because I thought the area was closed. The driver and the passenger got out looked around and got back into the vehicle very suspiciously. They drove out of the area and out of sight. I immediately went to the booth and found the key to the radio and carried with us. I called the on-call ranger and told them about the incident that the two seemed very sketchy like they were looking for something. I also told them about the other rangers assigned to the area. He said there was nothing he could do until their shift ended at around 8 pm. I watched the road for a little while longer and noticed the light was now getting dimmer. I decided to check out the woods to the west of the picnic area. The area was quite hard to access and required some bushwhacking. As I walked along the natural trail I noticed now that most light was gone. I stopped and looked around noticed it had now become very quiet. Just about no sounds whatsoever I began to walk more quickly. I had a bad feeling about being out there alone. As I was making my way along the trail I heard something walking towards me. I stopped and listened. I swear that I could hear breathing. I was scared but somehow managed to get up my flashlight and turn it on. The beam of light illuminated the area in front of me and I finally saw what was standing about 15 feet in front of me. The thing was 7 to 8 feet tall, made from a combination of fern skin. It looked like a mixture of bear and a human. I raised the radio to my mouth to call the on-call ranger again, it let out the most terrifying growl that I've ever heard. It raised its right arm and lunged to me but I turned and ran as fast as I could down the trail. I knew that I only had about a quarter mile to go before I would reach the open meadow area. I was trying my hardest not to look back but did so and saw the thing was keeping up with me with ease. I kept telling myself that it was just an animal and there was nothing supernatural about it, but that did not work. As I reached the open meadow I tripped on a fallen log and went down. I was trying to get up and run when I heard it coming. A shot rang out and I could hear the cracking of twigs and branches. Then the on-call ranger appeared and told me to stay down. The thing was circling us but it would not approach any closer. The ranger fired two more shots. We could hear the thing running away he helped me up and walked me back to the booth. I injured my knee during the fall but did not want to see any medical help. We had a mutual agreement together to keep quiet about this and to not tell our supervisors or anybody else we know. We have no idea what kind of professional retribution there would be or potentially career kill. Since all this, I've moved to Georgia and I now work for a private security firm I still do a lot of hiking and camping but never really go off trail if I can help it. My husband is a park ranger like I and he has seen more than I have and has witnessed more things than he can explain. Currently I'm on the east coast and my husband is on the west. We have parks in common and we have parks that are different. I'm also kind of a park naturalist and have been in many places in the parks that most people have not gone to. The thing that struck me the most is that I could not explain was when I worked at Canyonlands National Park. I was working at the island and the Sky Visitor Center. It was around the time when Canyonlands National Park was getting a lot of attention due to the statuses of Dark Sky Sanctuary. I had many people from the public come and ask me questions about how to see the night sky. 
One couple came in and spent quite some time talking about the stars and planets. The man of the couple, probably around 30 years of age, left for a moment to go to the bathroom. His girlfriend asked are we close to a skinwalker ranch. I was quite taken aback and replied we are quite a distance away probably over an hour's drive. They told me that's a good thing because they are not what they say they are. I asked her what are they and she said they were stalking manipulative dangerous creatures but she could not tell me much more. She acted very strange and very fidgety almost like a drug addict would, while they were feeding. It was very strange behavior but I doubt she was on drugs because she was very coherent. And even though what she was saying was creepy it wasn't exactly drug talk. We spoke for a few more minutes then her boyfriend returned and they left. I still wonder about that encounter and what she meant. It sounded like she knew something. I've often thought about it I would love to know more about what she knew about them specifically but I attribute that encounter to a different thing altogether. Again I've been doing this job for well over 20 years and while I've had some strange experiences like that I've never exactly seen a ghost or some sort of demon before. My second story. So this happened around the same time. I was working night and actually walking back to one of my vehicles, not my personal vehicle by the way, and maybe about 35 yards into the woods I heard my name being called by a voice that sounds very familiar. I could not quite put my finger on who it was but I knew the voice from somewhere but they were very softly calling my name from in the woods. Immediately this struck every wrong chord in my body because I knew that whoever this person was it did not mean well. If you catch my drift. And how do they know my name? They were clearly stalking me something. Everything about the situation was bad. I called out to them showing my light and my gun demanding they show themselves. I realized once I stopped talking just how quiet the night was. Even the crickets had ceased their noise making. I quickly backed my way to my vehicle and drove out of there. I don't know what that was or who that was but I'm glad I did not find out. I had been working as a forest ranger for almost five years. A ranger's day could consist of anything from collecting firewood to tracking down missing hikers. And my day began like most. I would wake up early, walking into work, grabbing my binoculars. As I was about to drive out of the forest, I got a call that day. I was given a new assignment. I met up with another colleague, a fellow ranger. And we went to the center of this area where somebody had been reporting hearing screaming coming from around a cave system nearby. My partner and me decided that I would be able to handle it by myself. He had other things to do and this was just another run-of-the-mill investigation for me. After he left I headed towards the area where there had been several unreported mounds to this cave system. Now let me give you some information. This cave system runs pretty deep and there are guided tours but I also know that this cave system is very expansive. And also having a lot of unidentified entrances and holes that can lean deeper into the system. These are also off trail. So myself, I've never actually experienced finding more of these. Although I know hikers have reported finding many and even leaving makeshift markers to let other hikers know this was an entrance. The parts of the ground here are also dangerous meaning if you step on the wrong part the ground below you could collapse. Falling into a tunnel so I had to be very careful about how I approached this entire search. The good news is I wasn't hearing any screaming so that could be good or bad news. The bad news meaning the hiker, whoever was stuck there, could have been deceased but the good news being that maybe the hiker had gotten themselves out anyway. My heart was pounding just by the sheer adrenaline of it. I didn't know why but something told me to run. It was this feeling in the pit of my gut. As soon as I got there, right around the cavern system, the wind picked up and everything seemed colder than it already was. A gust. Now I could have began my investigation in the main entrance but as I was planning, I heard the scream. It sounded like a person but they were maybe a couple hundred feet away north. So I marched through the trees looking, following the source of the screaming yelling out. Can you hear me? Can you respond? And the screaming ceased. I followed along the rock wall and found this crude hole in the ground. 
maybe no larger than five feet. It was right by a rotted tree stump with only one branch on it. This I knew probably went down into one of the cave systems. This by the way was probably no more than 200 feet away from the main entrance. After crouching down I was able to slide down at a 45 degree angle into this cave system. Landing in a small chamber that I think connected to the others. I always carry a flashlight with me so I took it out and turned it on. As soon as I did that the caves plunged into darkness as my battery instantly died. That's when I heard a loud crash. I turned around or I should say turned to meet the noise and my flashlight popped back on there. Like out of some sort of sick Stephen King novel was this grotesque figure. Large black eyes covering its entire body. Stretching its arms out and moving toward me. And terrified I wanted to turn and run but didn't have time as there was another one of these beings coming from the opposite side of the cave approaching. I turned as fast as I could and fled up the 45 degree incline about the cave just as I was turning to climb up I could hear a third one approaching from directly behind me. Now I had one coming from my left my right and behind me. This one as I turned and looked was larger than the other two. Completely terrified out of my mind and the sounds of screaming were now apparent. Coming deeper in the cavern. I don't know if it was an injured hiker or if these things were making the noise luring anybody into this tiny crevice, this chamber into the earth. Like I said the opening to this cavern wasn't large. But I never in a million years would have expected to find things like this. This was horror movie status. I didn't tell anybody else about what I found and kept it to myself. After climbing out of that hole I ran, and I ran, and I ran some more. Getting back to the station later on I didn't say a word. And I knew the other rangers wouldn't believe me and what would I tell them? That I found a cave full of half arachnids, half creatures? I mean they'd probably think I was crazy now. I've kept this sacred for a while but how long can I keep it from the rest of the world? Will my story ever be told to other people? Or should I just stay quiet about what had happened? Let me just apologize and say I'm sorry for the formatting of the story. I'm a terrible writer and I am not a storyteller. So I apologize in advance but these creatures that I saw were unlike anything I've ever seen. They really reminded me if you crossed a tarantula with a human. I mean these were gross, they made this hissing clicking noise too. I know it sounds phony through but it's really hard for me to convey emotion properly. At least through a written communication with all the information coming out anymore about missing hikers and seeing strange figures and shapes in the woods, and all the other bizarre happenings of 2020 I figured hey. Maybe now is an okay time to be open about my experiences and hopefully not experience backlash. Wife and I traveled from K Falls to a spring in the area. Walking back to car heard two different screams coming from two different directions like they were yelling back and forth to locate each other. Both passed within 100 yards on both sides of us. Met at Creek and the screams ended. They headed south by southwest. I went back next day, found high tree limbs broken off, tracks at water's edge, went to area the first screams came from, found large rocks that were thrown around, Found a large pile of scat, it was very large not a bear, seen lots of that. Very dark, grass, fat ticks, ants, small bones. Then I felt something watching me, and the need to run. My wife, son and I were traveling in a remote area on old logging roads looking for Indian trials that some old timer had told us about. It was midweek and had not seen a soul. The terry and his steep hills Douglas firs and pine trees. We came around a corner and to our surprise and the creatures had the encounter. The creature was running up the hill away from us. My first thought bear. He was on all fours. Midway he stopped looked and began to side hill the mountain. This time on his back two legs. The only time I saw him make gown contact with his front legs, arms, was his inside arm for balance. I toyed with the idea of following the creature but my with wife made it clear she had seen EO. I'm an avid woodsman. 
I have seen a lot of bear. This was not a bear. I understand now why nobody has shot one of these big boys. Very human-like. My plans are to return for a few days this summer with a good camera. Wish me luck.